I've got some concerns about his disciplinary issues. Uh, I don't know about all the other members, but uh, it looks like he got uh, a disciplinary write-up in July 2022. That was expunged, Mr. Marabella. Oh, it was expunged? It okay. was. So his last write-up was in um, 2018. Okay. There was something last year, but they reviewed the security cameras and it was expunged. Oh, okay. All right. That's cool. so that would... That would satisfy my concerns. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mine too. Now I've got to revoke. <laughs> uh, Ms. Wise, how about you? Uh, do you do you know whether or not he's completed the safety of treatment? Yes, he did. He's, he's complete. Did. Yes, ma'am. He's completed risk something. management. Okay. He's completed lots of different yeah. programs. Since his last hearing, he's finished an AA program. He was working at Angola as a trustee in the, uh, in the infirmary ward. Then he was transferred to David Wade in October. He's currently at Wade um, in an honor dorm. He completed an AA program. He's backlogged for a few programs at Wade, but he's he's doing fine. Um, and he was, it, you know, this is a he was a Graham case, so he was 17 years old at the time of his crime. He's been incarcerated now since 1993, um, 30 years. So we would. We would ask, just given that he's now had three years since his last hearing, and he's been doing really fine. He's been doing really well. He hasn't had any new write-ups. He's taken lots of programs where he could. Uh, we would ask this board give him another hearing. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Uh, the board ready to vote? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. My vote would be to grant. My vote is to grant as well. Mine also. Yeah. Thank you for being here, Ms. Hogan. Otherwise, I think we would have denied it. I'm <laughs> glad I came in. <laughs> yes, thank you so much. Y'all have a wonderful day. Well this morning. Thank you.
Good morning. Committee on Parole is called to order. Today's date is August the 8th of 2023. The time is 8.22. Uh, members of the panel today are Ms. Pearl Wise, Mr. Pete Freeman. My name is Tony Marabell. I'll be acting as chair today. Uh, would the uh, staff here at the DOC headquarters in Baton Rouge please introduce themselves? Carla Williams. Bryce Zab. Carla Williams. Thank you. Our remote location this morning is uh, in New Orleans Parish Prison. Are the staff there, please introduce themselves. Good morning. Uh, you're on mute, sir. Okay, let me see. Still can't hear you. Still can't hear me? Nope. Could you turn it a little louder, maybe? You can't turn up a microphone. It's a hard speaker. Something's going on here. Ask the morning, uh, Mr. Lubin, could you uh, test your microphone, please? I'm you and say something. Good morning. Can you hear me? Good morning. Can you hear me? There you go. We got you. Good. Good morning. I'm Deputy C. Tate, and I have with me with Mr. Brian Coleman. Thank you. Uh, Good morning. Uh, Mr. Coleman, uh, would you please give me your full name and DOC number? Good morning. Brian Coleman, 627-369. Do we have a list of uh, yes? Uh, just Mr. Yes. Lubin. Yes. Mr. Coleman, uh, you're set this morning for a revocation hearing. I want to explain our procedure to you. First, I'm going to cover your parole revocation questionnaire. Then I'm going to read the allegations of how it's alleged you violated your parole. I'll then ask you to plead either guilty, not guilty, guilty with a statement or not guilty with a statement. Uh, and then we'll have a full discussion about your allegations. Uh, you have several people who are here on your behalf. Uh, your attorney, Mr. Jack Lubin, uh, client advocate, uh, Roxanne Barnes, uh, your girlfriend, Linnell Robinson, and uh, your mother, Dion Coleman. Do you understand our procedure? Yes, sir. Mr. Lubin, uh, would you make uh, an appearance for the record, please? Good morning, board. Jack Lubin, uh, attorney here on behalf of Mr. Coleman. All right. Uh, Mr. Coleman, uh, have you had an opportunity? Do you have your parole revocation questionnaire in front of you? Yes, sir. Uh, is that information, is that your signature on the bottom of the page, uh, June 2nd, uh, 2023? Yes, sir. And at the time you filled that out, were all those answers accurate and correct? Yes, sir. Are they accurate and correct still today? Yes, sir. And you're represented by Mr. Rubin, uh, Mr. Lubin here today? That would be correct. And are you prepared to go forward? Yes, sir. Okay. I'm going to read the allegations uh, against you. And if you wish to confer with Mr. Lubin, you certainly can. But I'm going to ask you to enter a plea to each one of them. The first one is number three, you moved from your reported address without permission and failed to provide a new address to your parole officer. How do you plead to that allegation? Uh, can I refer to Mr. Lubin? Sir. Um, yeah, and Mr. Coleman, as a reminder, uh, the board noted that you can either plead guilty or not guilty with explanation to each. Um, it's, would you like me to enter a plea or do you want to enter a plea for yourself? Uh, you can enter a plea because uh, we had already went over this before. Yes. Um, and so at the preliminary hearing and in Mr. Coleman and I's discussions, we're going to plead guilty with explanation to that one. Okay. Uh, I'd be happy to offer a global explanation to all of the um, alleged violations that fall within the technical realm, or I can handle them one by one, whatever the board. Okay, we'll, we'll get to that in just a moment. First, let's go ahead and, and, and go through the, the arraignment, so to speak. Uh, number four, you failed to refrain from criminal activity, which is shown by your arrest on April the 20th of 2023 by the New Orleans Police Department for the change of domestic abuse battery, for the charge of domestic abuse battery. How do you plead to that allegation? And to that one, we are going to plead not guilty with explanation. Okay. And uh, all of the charges were refused on May the 17th of 2023. 
Number six, you fail to provide proof of employment while on parole supervision. What's the plea to that one? Guilty with explanation. Okay. And uh, you moved, uh, number nine is you moved from your reported residential address and failed to provide an address where you could be uh, visited. Guilty with explanation. And that finally, number 10, you failed to make any payments towards your parole supervision and currently are $1,260 in arrears. Guilty with explanation. Mr. Uh, Coleman, your case has been assigned to Mr. Pete Freeman. He will begin our interview process. So would you please answer any questions he may have? Yes, sir. Mr. Freeman. Okay, Mr. Coleman. Uh, my background is probation and parole. I used to be the director. So I'm gonna get to the meat and potatoes of this situation. I'm not as concerned about where you were living as long as you can give us a permanent address now. Um, were you working? I mean, did you have the means to pay some fees? Yes, sir. I was working, but I, I had just got a job and um, my job, the first job that I had wasn't paying enough. So I had just re reconnected to another job site and um, I just was getting a good amount of pay that was going to help me provide for my family and pay the fines and fees that I needed to pay correctly in a appropriate amount of time that I had. Okay. Um, do you still think this job will be open if you get out? Yes, sir. When I got incarcerated, I called my boss and let him know that I was incarcerated. And um, he just took me off the the schedule that way I don't get fired. So he told me when I get out, he recommend me to um, reapply and he's gonna rehire. Okay, and what was this job? What were you doing? Uh, I was a laborer at um, Zachary. It's like a um. I know, I know that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now let's 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 talk about something. I want you to tell me the absolute truth because it's gonna go a long ways today. Um, I've read the arrest reports. I've read the statement. Did uh, you and Miss Dominique have a dispute on that date? Yeah, it was a, it was a, it was a verbal dispute. Okay. Uh, did you push her back in the doorway? No, sir. Okay, now be honest with me. Okay, things will go a lot better on you. Yeah, I'm one hundred percent honest, sir. Okay. Um. Did your brother and a friend of hers have to try to pull you off of her? No, my brother and her friend was there. They didn't have to pull me off her because, like I said, I wasn't on her. She was, it was just argument, and she was just over it, loud. And when it came to that point, I just left the house. That's, that's where everything messed up there because when she was screaming and fussing and my brother and her friend they was trying to stop her from screaming and fussing, I just left. And she called the police on me. I didn't know what was going on because I removed myself from the situation by leaving the area completely. Did she bite you? No, she didn't bite me. Are you still dating her? No, sir. We wasn't dating. We were just neighbors at the time that was friends. Like, we wasn't dating, officially dating. We were just neighbors at the time. Are y'all still friends and... No, we're, no, we're not neighbors at the, at this time. Like when all that happened, um, it took place that Section Eight got involved and my mom had to move. So, yeah. all right. Uh, Mr. Coleman, I uh, I'm gonna have some recommendations. Uh. And I have no further questions. Okay, let's hear from uh, your mother. Miss uh, Dion Coleman. Good morning. Good, Good morning. morning. Let me raise the volume up. Good morning. We can hear you. Okay. Tell us what you'd like us to know, ma'am, about your son. 
Oh, I didn't hear that. Good morning. Uh, my name is Dion Coleman, and I'm the mother of Brian Coleman. And I come to you all. I come to you all with great enthusiasm, 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 and um, in great happiness in speaking on behalf of my son. I sent mitigation letters to his lawyer. She asked us to send mitigation letters. So if you would like to, I don't know. She, I just, I, I don't know. She have them, but. The things that I would like to speak on on behalf of my son, Brian is a very well mannered child. Brian graduated from from Joseph S. Clark in 2013. Brian graduated from high school. When I had Brian, I knew Brian was gonna make me proud because Brian was always there by my side. Brian is a kind child, very very well mannered, very matured. And when Brian re-entered society and he attended Delgado Community College, where he had hopes of obtaining a degree from their engineering because he was always there to help others to fix on anything, fix the normal and on anything. Brian worked two jobs and was doing everything positive in society. He is a caring person. He and Brian, when he came home, Brian also feel a boy. I had a son that had passed away a couple of years ago and Brian filled that boy. Brian is well known in his family for his for helping us all. He and when he re-entered society again, he had demonstrated to me that he was determined to overcome the mistakes that he had made in life by being productively, and he was. And I asked the court for leniency on my son this morning. He's he's a very positive child. He was doing everything positive. Yeah. He was doing everything positive, going to school, trying to get a, 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 a degree in engineering, working two thank, jobs. Thank you, Ms. Coleman. We've got a lot of people that we want to talk, but we understand what your comments are, and we appreciate your comments. Okay, thank you. And I, and I ask for mercy on my son because he's a very good child. He, he didn't do anything. Yes, ma'am. We appreciate that. Okay, thank we'll you. We'll now hear from Ms. Linnell Robinson, uh, Mr. Uh, Coleman's girlfriend. Ms. Robinson, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear. Okay. Okay, so I'll be reading off of the letter. Um, I have known Brian for four years now, and we have been partners for three of those years. During our second year, we decided to move in together. Brian has always helped with the bills and helped around the house. He cleaned every day, washed dishes, um, because he knew I didn't like to do that. Uh, Brian and I started college together. He enrolled in college um, with me. He was going for his degree for automotive technology. We um, told each other we would graduate together, and he has always been a provider to me, especially when I was diagnosed with stage four cancer. He stepped up in a major way. Um, Brian came to every single doctor's appointment, and uh, he made sure to remember everything every doctor and nurse told me, that way he can let my mom know and keep her in a loop. Brian prayed for me and uh, with me every night and emotionally was emotionally there for me when I needed him. Um, so he gave me encouraging words and made sure he lifted, up, lifted me up during my tough times. Um, I was no longer able to work uh, due to being disabled. So Brian was um, always sweet and gentle. Um, I have never known Brian to be a violent person, especially not with me. He loved and cared for me during such a challenging time and made the transition super easy while taking on other tasks. Um, Brian began working at Take 5 full time and he even worked overtime doing uh, delivering for Uber, um, all while attending school and still taking care of me. Brian is extremely hardworking and makes sure he never misses a day. With Brian being currently away, um, it is hard for me to pick up the pieces because he was such a great provider. Um, we continue to pray that he can make it back home. Um, he also got a career advancement and started working at the company called Zachary um, at a plant. Um, Brian was able to save up money and he also bought himself a really nice car and that was one of his big, biggest accomplishments. Um, I honestly think with everything going on at the end of 2021 and 2022, um, it was hard for Brian to focus on himself or anything really, but besides providing for his family. Um, Ultimately, Brian is uh, responsible, but with me now aware of his obligations to his parole, um, I can now help him keep him on track with all of his responsibilities um, as such, keeping his parole officer updated and also paying his fees. Thank you, ma'am. We appreciate your comments. Ms. Barnes? 
I'm going to go straight. My name is Roxanne Barnes. I'm a client advocate with the public defenders. I want to list for the board, the organ, um, organizations and resources that I've uh, mustered on Mr. Coleman's behalf. Should he have any difficulty obtaining a job from the employer that he seems confident he can go back to, I want to note that I will connect him with one. I have several resources, including CEO Works, which is a temp service that employs recently incarcerated individuals. I will also try and connect him with the SURFER 72 for peer advocacy and for job support. So he will not have difficulty obtaining a job and paying back the arrears on his parole. Uh, I also want to flag that he is interested in learning some techniques for de-escalation in light of this experience and incarceration. So I have made him an appointment with CADA, Prevention and Recovery Services, to learn those techniques. He's scheduled for that on the 24th of this month at 11 a.m. That is attached in the packet um, that, the, that the board received yesterday. Um, once Mr. Coleman secures this gainful employment, I will do my best to ensure that he communicates this with the parole officer, steady income will ensure that he's able to financially pay back those arrears. Once he works through this degree at Delgado, that will hopefully put him in the path of lucrative job opportunities and he will continue to make those payments on time. I also want to note that he has a myriad of community supports whose letters are included in this packet. He will return to living with Ms. Linnell Robinson, who he does help to provide for financially, like she noted. Um, she has, like she said, been made aware of his responsibilities and will help him to stay in compliance. The same is true of the other people in the packet. I have personally spoken to all of them and ensured they understand he needs to register his address, his place of employment, and he needs to be making those payments and he needs to avoid any entanglements with the law. All of them will be able to help him do this now that everyone is on the same page about what his responsibilities and obligations to parole are going to be. As well, I will remain his advocate for the duration of this period of time and for as long as he needs uh, to ensure that everything is in compliance and that he is able to leave jail, re-enter society, continue his degree at Delgado, get back to automotive repair, which is his passion, and um, continue with a working relationship with parole. I'll be available to him and to the board for questions. Thank you very much, ma'am. We appreciate your comments. Mr. Coleman, before we turn it over to Mr. Lubin, is there anything you'd like to say to the board? No, sir. Mr. Lubin? Thank you, everyone, for speaking on Mr. Coleman's behalf. I appreciate you being here. And thank you, board, for, for asking thoughtful questions and listening. Uh, I'm going to address, first, offer an explanation to each plea entered and then address more broadly uh, the supports we have in place for Mr. Coleman and advocate on behalf of Mr. Coleman for why he should be released back into the community. I wanna start with uh, the elephant in the room in terms of allegations, the only allegation to which we pled not guilty, which is the allegation that Mr. Coleman failed to refrain from criminal conduct as evidenced by his arrest. Uh, as the board noted, the charges in the case, the charges on which Mr. Coleman was arrested were ultimately refused which I think is quite indicative of the lack of substantiation of the allegations. But I think the exact way that they were refused bears noting. It's my understanding, and I've been provided with documentation to show this, that within a week, I believe even less of a police report being filed, the person who had filed a police report and who had called the police in the first place went to the district attorney's office and signed an affidavit requesting that the charges be dropped. Now, because Mr. Coleman had not been arrested on these charges, because it was an active warrant rather than an open criminal charge, the charge drop form was never processed. A warrant stayed open for the better part of a year and a half. Mr. Coleman was fully unaware that a warrant was out. Had he known, he would have turned himself in. Everyone in Mr. Coleman's life thought this was over. Now, of course, it did not go through because the mechanics of refusing or dropping a case are very opaque and very difficult for even a lawyer like me to follow. But ultimately, I do want the board to note that this was a situation that was almost immediately resolved on behalf of the parties and from the parties. This was not a situation where the DA's office had to spend the entire 30 to 60 day period investigating, ultimately determining that the case was not fruitful. It was clear from the start that the story we see on the police report is not the story that should rule the day. Now, Mr. Coleman and I have discussed extensively, and Mr. Coleman admitted to the board that there was a verbal dispute that day. And Mr. Coleman knows, as someone who was on parole, as evidenced by the fact that he's interested in de-escalation and anger management programs, 
that it is important to not put yourself in a position where law enforcement could be involved. He is clear about that responsibility, and he knows that he should not have been in that room. But I want the board to be very clear that that does not equate to failing to refrain from criminal conduct. And because I have not been furnished with any discovery, any body cam, or anything because of the fact that the case was refused, there is only so much I can point the board to today to positively disprove that any criminal conduct occurred. But I would ask the board to consider that these are only allegations, allegations that were recanted within a week's time, allegations that are now on the better part of two years old, and also allegations that do not match any of Mr. Coleman's prior record, which is a record consisting almost exclusively of charges related to substance use, a problem that Mr. Coleman has well addressed by now, but also because of the fact that uh, this charge was refused conclusively. Now, as to the other allegations, the ones to which Mr. Coleman pled guilty, I would note, and I also believe the board noted this, that these are largely violations that fall within the technical realm. One of them, I believe, is duplicative because there are two allegations that more or less allege that Mr. Coleman failed to update his address. And then there is one allegation that he failed to pay his uh, probation fee or parole fees and provide proof of employment. I would note for the board, first and foremost, that I have discussed with Mr. Pol Mr. Coleman, Ms. Barnes has discussed with Mr. Coleman, and we as a support network for Mr. Coleman have all gotten on the same page about what precisely his obligations to parole are. The fact that parole is a privilege, the fact that it's something that comes with responsibilities. Mr. Coleman is aware of this now. I would add for context that Mr. Coleman was released from incarceration and entered his period of parole during uh, more or less the height of the COVID-19 pandemic, when much of our daily lives, including things like interacting with probation and parole, had been transferred to the virtual realm. I do believe that there was a breakdown in communication from Mr. Coleman to the board because of the fact that the release process that he uh, experienced when he left was a unique and new one. Now, that's not an excuse, and that does not mean that Mr. Coleman did not have an obligation to follow up on these duties. But I would ask the board to consider that all of these allegations, in the grand scheme of things, are allegations that can easily, easily be fixed. As we've noted, Mr. Coleman has permanent and stable housing. It's a home he lives in with his girlfriend, who has taken the time out of her day to come in front of the board today, and who has made herself accountable to the board, as Mr. Coleman also intends to do. We have community members around him who will ensure that he does not go back into jail because as you've heard from his community, people depend on Mr. Coleman. He is a caretaker. He stepped into the void when his brother passed away. He stepped up when his partner was diagnosed with stage four cancer. The other letters, including in the packet, detail how he diligently communicated with a friend during his friend's 12 year period of incarceration. Mr. Coleman is there for people. He is someone on whom people rely and on whom people lean. And Mr. Coleman has the privilege of entering a community where he can do more of that service, but also one where the community can hold him accountable and make sure that in his drive to take care of his community, he doesn't forget to take care of things like paying his parole fees. I would note that, and you've heard this today and can see it in the support packet, but Mr. Coleman does have either stable employment or the support of my office through Ms. Barnes to ensure that he gets employment. He has housing secured. He is still enrolled in Delgado and is well on his way to getting a degree that, as Ms. Barnes noted, will increase his earnings potential and a degree that's in line with his interests. And also he has the community that is going to ensure that he is up to date with parole. Ultimately, I would ask the board to note that with the one exception of uh, these allegations that were promptly refused and promptly recanted by the complaining witness, the only other allegations here stem from a breakdown in communication with uh, a parole officer. Mr. Coleman is someone who has done an admirable job of getting back on his feet after a period of incarceration, who is doing things the right way, who is earning his own income, who is taking care of his family and his loved ones, and who is setting down roots to lead a positive life, be the man he wants to be, and actualize his potential. I would ask the board to consider all of this because these supports are still in place and the path for Mr. Coleman is still clear, available, and waiting for him. 
All he needs is the board's mercy and all he needs is the opportunity to return to his family, return to his partner and return to his community. So I'd ask the board consider all of that um, and offer Mr. Coleman the opportunity to get another chance. Thank you, Mr. Levin. Uh, board ready to vote? Yes, sir. Mr. Freeman? Okay. Uh, Mr. Coleman, uh, you know, I wish you to to be a, a little bit more honest with me. Your attorney doesn't have access to these records, but there was body camera footage. There were statements that you were pulled off of her. Um, but the fact remains that you were headed in the right direction, trying to do the right thing. Uh, so my vote today is going to be to do not revoke and that you report to Ms. Barnes. I think it's at the DA's office, Ms. Barnes. Um, I think that, I'm with the public defender's office. I'm um, sorry, we're at the public defender's office and take some de escalation classes. Also, I want you to stay away from Ms. Dominic. And for the first, for the next six months, I want you to wear an electronic monitoring device that will be provided by probation and parole at no cost to yourself so that we can assure that you do not go around the victim. And that's my recommendation. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Raymond, Ms. Weiss. Uh, Mr. Coleman, I, 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 I too have some concerns, but I'm gonna take a chance on you. And my vote is the same for the same reasons. Mr. Coleman, you have two votes, uh, not to revoke you, uh, to uh, release you, put you back on parole with the same, uh, with additional conditions. Uh, I agree with my colleagues, uh, my vote would be the same. So your the decision is, and you need to understand, you need to report to Ms. Barnes and follow all of the recommendations of the public defender office. office. You'd have no contact with the victim in this case. And you are to be under uh, electronic monitoring for the entire time? No, six. For six months. Good luck to you, sir. All right, thanks. Thank you so much, board.
The committee on parole is called back to order. The time is 8.55. Our next case is Mr. Jason Dozart. Mr. Dozart, would you give us your full name uh, and DOC number, please? Uh, yes, sir. Good morning. Uh, Jason H. Dozart, Sr., 44-83-45. Thank you, Mr. Dozart. Mr. Dozart, this is a uh, probation revocation hearing. Uh, I want to explain to you what our process is. Do we have a list of witnesses? Mr. Dozart, first I'm going to read some information into the record. I mean, first I'm going to go over your uh, parole revocation questionnaire with you. Do you have that with you? Yes, sir. Right here. Then I'm going to go over the uh, alleged uh, uh, violations. I'm going to read each one of them to you and ask you to enter a plea. Uh, the pleas would be either guilty, not guilty, guilty with the statement, or not guilty with the statement. Then we'll allow any persons who wish to have input to uh, say what they'd like to say. You have present here uh, at headquarters uh, your mother, Miss Diane Jackson, who wishes to speak, and your brother, Gerald Blue, who is here simply for moral support. Thank you, sir. Uh, and then uh, you'll have an opportunity to say whatever you'd like to say, and then we'll vote. You understand our procedure? Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Dozart, uh, you have the uh, questionnaire in front of you? Oh, yes, sir. Okay. Is that your signature at the bottom of the page? Yes, sir. Uh, you signed it on June the 23rd of 2023? Yes, sir. Are those questions all accurate and correct? Yes, sir. <laughs> Uh, are they same? Are they still today accurate and correct? Yes, sir. Are you prepared to move forward with your hearing? Yes, sir. Okay. I'm going to read the allegations of each one of them, then I'm going to ask you to enter your plea as I go through them. Number yes, sir. Four, the first one is number four. You failed to refrain from criminal activity as evidence of your arrest on August the 28th, 2022, by New Orleans Police Department for the following offenses armed robbery with a firearm, aggravated second degree battery, simple assault, and two counts of a firearm, of possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. How do you plead to that allegation? Not guilty, sir. On May the 31st of 2023, you pled guilty to misdemeanors on the pending charges, docket master and bill of information, which includes that on October the 19th of 2022, offender was billed with the following charges. Count one, aggravated assault with a dangerous weapon upon a dating partner amended to disturbing the peace and sentenced to 90 days uh, at Orleans Parish Prison credit for time served. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Count two, possession of a firearm or a weapon by a felon amended to simple criminal damage to property. You were sentenced to six months in all these parish prison credit for time served. Is that accurate? Yes, sir. Count three, armed robbery with a firearm amended to theft under $750 and sentenced to six months parish prison credit for time served. Is that accurate and correct? Yes, sir. Count four, aggravated second degree battery was amended to deserving the peace and sentenced to 90 days at Orleans Parish Prison credit time served. Is that accurate and correct? Yes, sir. Uh, count five, possession of a firearm uh, or weapon by a felon was now crossed. To, to your knowledge, is that ac accurate as well? Yes, sir. And finally, number 10, uh, the allegation is you still owe $1,275 in supervision fees. How do you plead to that? Uh, I plead guilty to that. I got to plead guilty with a statement. Okay. Uh, uh, your, case, uh, your case has been assigned uh, to Ms. Pearl Wise. Uh, would you please answer any questions she may have? Yes, sir. Good morning. Good morning, ma'am. Uh, how long have you been in jail on this matter? Since uh, August the 28th, uh, 22. <laughs> okay. Uh, were you working at the time you got arrested for this? I was, but I just, well, no, actually, no, technically, no, I just I got laid off uh, because uh, they went bankruptcy for the construction company I was working for. Oh, okay. What kind of work were you doing? I was doing construction work, uh, grading uh, concrete and laying geo grid uh, and uh, fabric down in, okay. Orleans, uh, in the New Orleans East area. Okay. For Vernon oh. Kelly, for Vernon Kelly Associates. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Now, they lost, they lost their now, country. You, said you were working, but you weren't paying your fees. 
No, uh, no, my my. I have a son that's he uh, going into second year at uh, UL Ridge and Cajuns, and uh, I was helping him with tuition and housing. Uh, my daughter is at uh Morehouse taking up cosmetology for facial and uh uh hair, and I was about to be uh paying for marriage arrangements. So yeah, uh, I did stop paying for some of my payments, but I for the longest I paid my payments. You know, I, just, I did. I am. I am guilty of being backed up for that. You, you realize those payments are your freedom. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. I do know. Contact with your children. You won't have. You won't have marriage plans. You don't have nothing if you don't have your freedom. Yeah. That, to see it like that, that needs to go off the top. Take care of your freedom first, and then everything else will fall in line. I got that, ma'am. I'm sorry about that. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. I should. I should hope so. I mean, I, I, your kids will understand as long as you're free. Yes, yeah, ma'am. It's going out there, and you're doing what you can. Uh, now, how, what was your relationship to the victim in this case? I do want you to know that we uh, we have the videotape of where the officer went to the hospital room and interviewed the victim. Yeah, uh, actually, I, I am. I have no. Uh, that was my fiance, Neil Tech, and I, I really don't know him like that. So, wh why did y'all get into the altercation? Uh, actually, it wasn't never no altercation. They had to something to do that with that. Was her. in the hospital in a hospital bed. Yeah, no, I, I'm talking about I, I don't know him. Like I know it, she has something to she had something to do with that. I really don't know him. I just know of him from seeing him doing her nails. No, okay, okay. I guess I didn't I didn't phrase that question correctly. Uh, right. so what happened on that day? Uh on the day for what day that was. When this incident happened and you got arrested, what happens? Uh I just I'm saying I, I don't I was wanted for that. I don't I don't I don't know him. Like that. That's what I'm saying. I, I have no acknowledgement. You of that. never hit it? You never hit it? No, no, ma'am. No, ma'am. He said you hit it. Yes, ma'am. He did say I hit him, but I, I don't I don't know. I don't have no knowledge of him like that. I just know of him being a nail tech for my fiance. That was one of her friends. And he was living with her, wasn't he? No, that man was not living with her, ma'am. Ain't no grown man was gonna be on the same roof with me. No. Not with me and, and my friend. You were living with her. Well, you know, I was residing there from here and there, you know, because I, I reside at my mama's house, but that's my fiance house. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So you were saying you never hit him, although he stayed me saying that you did hit him. And you yes, said nothing happened. Yes, ma'am. You never challenged him about not paying your fiance rent? Nah, I never even knew nothing about that. I'm saying that, that man didn't stay there. He didn't stay there. Okay. But, but you're not there all the time, so you don't know. If you didn't stay there full time, <laughs> I'm paying bills there, so I, I know who stayed there, ma'am. Okay. okay, so that was that was his statement. Yes, ma'am. And now, was there were there other incidents of, of domestic violence against you during this parole period? Was that the only one? Wait, what you mean well, when you say parole? Uh, yes, since you've been out on parole, when, when you got out in 2020, uh, was there another incident of domestic battery and, and the girlfriend dropped the charges? Is that the same one as the fiance you're with now? No, ma'am. That's that a whole else? yeah, that's a whole totally different other person. I used to actually it was like a three-way kind of relationship thing with the fiance I have now and with her. And one person got mad because I can't be with the other one and it came with allegations and you know that was that was it on that part, but it didn't go no farther than that. Okay. Besides the allegations, ma'am. Oh, okay. Okay. So if you're successful today and, and you're released, what would you do? Where would you live and what would you do? Oh, I'm going back to my mama residence mm -hmm. on 7626 Alabama Street. Uh -huh. I, have, I have unemployment with my good friend. Uh, he work at, uh, he a laborer at Domino's uh, Sugar Factory. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be hired over there for $20 an hour, 12 hour shifts. Uh, I just want to continue to be in my kids and my mama life, you know, uh, do well by myself also. That's my main priority to get myself together before anything. And, you know, continue to try to move accordingly. You know, I ain't been in no trouble. My uh, parole officer, I always see him. And uh, I maintain the job. I'm, I'm, okay, let me stop you there. Let me stop yes, you there. I'm still not clear as to why you got arrested. I need you to be honest. Oh, I actually, I called the police, and it happened. I had these warrants. That, that was two warrants out for me. I don't want to call the police on her to get my belongings, and and I had her kid. I was watching her kid. She didn't come home that night. 
So, you know, that was my rap right there. That was like we, it was a toxic, toxic relationship. We always arguing, we always getting into it. So it was my time to go. You know, I, I notified my parole officer way ahead of time, months ago, uh, on her threatening me numerous times of putting charges on me. So he told, he asked me, well, how how do I want to pursue? I asked him, how can I get a stairway order? So when he he told me it'll be a civil matter, she'll have to get a warrant out for her. I didn't want her to get taken away from her kids. You know what I'm saying? So I left it like that. And a time she called him, threat, uh, talking about I threatened her and stuff like that. So when he asked her what she wanted him to do, she started going off on him. And he and when he came to see me, he told me this story. That's how I know about this, you know, about what happened. And he was well, like, I'm not, I'm not I'm not with you now. This this is not lined up with anything that's in, in the file. So what are you what are you talking about? I'm I'm talk, talking. Yeah, I'm talking about when I came to jail, I called the uh-huh. I'm the one who called the police. Okay. I'm the one who called the police on her. But I had a warrant out for me. So when they ran my name in, I had an automatic come down. So and the warrant was from what incident? It was for both, and I had two warrants out for me for both of them incidents. That's all incidents. Like this is from August, I mean April, and that one from August. Mm-hmm. I went to jail August the 28th or 22. The incident was supposed to be for her was April, okay. early, uh, April sometime. And the incident for the for the for the for the fella, the Jamal Jones, was on the 20th. Of what? I mean, on the 20th of August. August sometime. So what can you do to, to stop getting in these skirmishes and you on parole when you got two children in college? How are you conducting yourself and this this kind of stuff keep happening? I, no, actually, that. I'm I'm sorry, man. No, I, go ahead. Actually, uh, I just gotta stop messing with 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 toxic relationships. You know, so I'm not a, I'm not a bad dude at all. Uh, I take care of people. Uh. You know, I'm I'm caring, I'm loving, I'm. But you end up in jail. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And falsely, I'm not saying I'm just all the way innocent. I do argue, I do get into it. But far as put my hands on my jacket, I don't have now uh, domestic violence uh, or anything aggravated or fight anything on my jacket. That's that's not me. Well, you, you know have a rest for that. You don't have conviction, but you do have a rest for that. Yes, ma'am. That makes it on your jacket. That makes it on your jacket. Okay, well, uh, you know, those allegations, ma'am. That's true, but it's on your jacket. Yes, ma'am, and I apologize for that. You is correct. You is correct, ma'am. Were you using any kind of drugs or alcohol doing all Oh, no. Oh, oh, no, ma'am. I never urine. Okay. I, I take, okay. yes, that's fine. That's fine. I take no, drugs no. by my parole officer. So no, I ain't never failed no drug tests. I never, okay. missed, I never missed a day of seeing them or nothing. Okay. And I maintained a job since 20. Okay, that's all I have. Yes, ma'am. Okay, uh, according to the summary of the preliminary hearing, uh, police item D04892 indicates that Mr. Burp Dozat verbally threatened the victim, Precious Gate, by shouting, I'm going to kill you. I can't wait to kill you. You want me to say something on that, uh, sir? Yeah, I want your I want your response to that. Uh, that, that 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 never that never went on, sir. We had broken up at the time, and she mad because I don't want to be with her no more. And that's what she can get. She get real real devious on on her end, uh, sir. Body camera. I didn't, I didn't hear you. Okay, nothing. I'm re- I'm, I'm yeah. speaking to myself. Okay, thank you. Mr. Dozard, why did you plead guilty to these charges? Wait, well, I, I didn't plead guilty uh, to what charges? All these misdemeanor charges. No, because I was set to go to trial and... You were set to go to trial on the charges for which you were arrested. Yes, sir. Rather than go to trial because you were innocent, you yes, were sir. to plead guilty to lesser charges. So you did something. What did you do? You're denying having done anything. You, no, you, pled, you pled guilty to disturbing the peace, yes, sir. damage to property, uh, theft under $750, and disturbing the peace. You pled guilty to five, four different charges, yet you're saying, I didn't do a thing. Yeah, that's so How I does do. that jive? 
No, that was my uh, plea arrangement, so I, I wouldn't have to uh, uh, take my uh, take a chance and risk my life to go into trial, sir. Well, if you didn't do anything, why not go to trial? Cause I ain't want. Uh, I I I went to trial before on my last charge, and I was innocent. Like I found guilty with a jury. Ah, so you I don't think, trust the system. Yes, sir. I'm so just, you I'm, ended up pleading guilty to four separate charges. Yes, sir. All involving the more serious charges, but lesser offenses. You pled to all of those. Yeah, but it, uh, the charges weren't supposed to be contained. It was just supposed to be so I can go ahead and get my uh, parole. No, sir, you pled guilty. A judge, yes, a judge read some facts into the record about what <laughs> happened, and you said, yes, Your Honor, I'm guilty to those. No, uh, it was because I uh, pled guilty to a lesser charge. That was, I that hear was... you. But the charge you pled guilty to is disturbing the peace. Death for Oregon. Healing. And criminal damage to property, and you say I didn't do nothing. No. <laughs> that was that was the goal. That was so I don't have to go to trial. That's the only reason why I pleaded that. So I don't have to go to trial to, go, to you know, Mr. A lot of people plead guilty because they're guilty. Yes, sir. I understand you, that. You went before a judge. You raised, you, swore, you raised your right hand. You swore sir. to tell the truth, and the judge said, "Did you do these things?" And you said, "Yes, I did," and you pled guilty. Because I didn't want to, I, no, I, I did that so I, I I don't get uh violated with my parole. There's misdemeanors that I can uh take that won't really harm my parole. That's well, that's. I'll tell you one thing. Yes, I, I'm very concerned about what you did, and it may very well violate your parole. Uh, I see that now, sir. I didn't, didn't, in court, it wasn't read to me like that. It, it, it wasn't read to me. Well, the, judge, like, the judge isn't going to sit there and tell you all of those things. The yeah. judge is getting ready to go to trial on these more serious charges, and you cut a deal. Yeah, you, yeah. you were scared to go to trial. Actually, I'm the one who pursued it, but this, uh, my lawyer advised me to take these, you know, misdemeanors. I was hoping you to be in a deal to speak on my behalf to let y'all know the real circumstances of the case. You know what I'm saying? Uh, all right. Okay. That's all I got. Let's right. hear from your supporters. Let's hear from uh, your mom. Your mother's here, Miss uh, Jackson. Yes. Good morning, Miss Jackson. How are you? If you go right to that podium right there, right behind. You. No, ma'am, the other side. That's okay. <laughs> Good morning, ma'am. If you will introduce yourself and just tell us what you'd like us to know about your son. My name is Diane W. Jackson. I'm Jason's mother. Um, I have been working with my son for three years, and Jason is the primary kid, which uh, they are there. Yeah. My son was a master sergeant. My uh, daughter graduated from college, and she has the back. She had a bachelor's and uh, I, Jason is very humble. I didn't, I didn't have no whole no problem with Jason, you know. And uh, he helps me, you know, when he's there, he'll help me, you know, everything. Right now, I'm sick. Help a many, took care of a many of them, and raised children, and you know, and sick and older people, you know, and everything. And I'm right now, I had all, all kinds of things wrong. I died at it. I had a mastectomy cancer. I had a little bladder and everything. And a uh, little heart trouble. And uh, I need him to help me, you know, because... I've been doing this all my life, taking care and helping people, you know. <laughs> and uh, he's a caring person. He loves kids. He's a very caring person. And if he's going to give you something, he's going to give it to you. He ain't going to steal or take nothing from you, you know. And uh, I think that uh, I'll give him another chance, you know. He could do better because he was working for Dave and Buster. He started out and then he got the other job. And he was working. 
Thank you very much, man. We appreciate you coming. Mr. Dozard, is there anything you'd like to say? Yes. Uh, speaking on my behalf right now, right? Yes, sir. Uh, my mom, my mom is my backbone. She don't, she don't, she didn't think I know that I that she, that she sick. She you know she tried to hold it from me, man. And uh, my nephew, you know, he's he always tell tells me everything because he don't want to be in a worry, which that's why she don't tell me because I be wanting to know everything about my mom. Uh, I have two kids, like I told you, uh, that need me out there. They're in college. I would like to continue to be in their life. I just I, I miss so many years of their life. I did 11 and a half years and miss everybody. You know, I don't want, I want to be out there for my mom, you know. Uh, I, I got the job that I, I'm waiting on. Uh, I have a certificate right here that I received in here is when the Metropolitan Human uh, Service Directs uh, District, uh, the certificate was presented to me who has successfully completed 16 hours of pre of peer support lead groups at New Orleans Justice Center, awarded uh, the 10th day of March, the year of 23 for anger management, substance use, attitude motivation, mental health, Positive thinking, reentry planning, recovery support service, victim awareness, and trauma. I also finished uh, community research within the greater New Orleans area for improving well being throughout the recreation area. It's like a recreational therapy. Uh, I'm in numerous programs, I'm in the Goodwill program. I have a contract for the Goodwill program that's going to help me with housing. Uh, snaps, uh, any kind of thing to get me on my feet. The recreational program want me to come speak to youth individuals that I'm willing to do. I told them I have to be a weekend thing because I know I'm going to be working five days a week if the Lord say the same, I make it out there to my family. Uh, you know, I might have made some, I might have made some mistakes, but I am trying to correct them. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not a bad person at all, sir. You know, I understand everything you were saying about pleading guilty to, but it, it, it just wasn't presented to me like how you presented to me. Cause trust me, if it was, you know, it wouldn't, it wouldn't have been that. That's why I was praying that my lawyer would have supposed to be here, cause he been got the memos, I been got my social, my case manager to, to fax him the emails, the, and he knew the date. He came see me yesterday. And he was supposed to have been here, so I don't know what happened with that. I pray that he all right. But uh, I just pray that y'all have leniency on me and uh, and keep, you know, just, I just pray that y'all have leniency on me, man. And thank you, and God bless y'all. Thank you, and God bless y'all, regardless of the decision y'all made. Thank you, Mr. Dozor. No, thank you, man. Yes, yes. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Um, Mr. Dozar, you didn't do yourself any good today. You sit up there and say you didn't do anything wrong. You, you arrested, you were in jail, didn't take responsibility for nothing. You were not honest today to me. And that's just that's me, it's my take on it. Um, yes, but your, your, uh, your mother being here today, that, that impacted me. Uh, thank you. It's, that's not, it's not because of anything you did, but because of who she is. My vote is in, in lieu of revocation that you served six months in jail and that you have one residence and that's seven nights a week at your mother's house. That is the only place you are to live. Now repeat that after me. You said served six months in jail, seven nights at my mama's residence. Because that's where you live. Say, I live with my mother. When I say I live, that means 24-7. All your stuff is there. Your toothbrush, everything is at your mother's house. That's where you live, one place. Yeah, yes, ma'am. That's my vote. I'm on a one vote, and I'm taking a chance on you. Thank you, uh, Ms. Watts. Yes, sir. Uh, 
Mr. Tozad, I also have the feeling you weren't honest today. I don't think you'd get arrested for all of those charges with the guy with a busted ear and all of the allegations, and you say nothing happened and you didn't touch him. Uh, you pled guilty to the misdemeanor charges. My vote is to revoke. Mr. Uh, Dozart, you have uh, two votes to one vote to revoke and one vote to uh, grant uh, to uh, in lieu of revocation. You serve six months in the parish prison and uh, live with your mother. Uh, Mr. Dozart, you, you know, uh, like Miss Wise, I, I, I I think your mother needs you. Uh, your mother is here supporting you. Uh, my heart goes out to her, and I want to help her. But you just lied to us today. You claim you didn't do anything, and I, you know, and I know that's BS. If you'd have been honest with us, and I understand you pled guilty to misdemeanors. Sure, people make deals all the time. But you pled to four different misdemeanors. You deny anything ever happening. And that's that's just a lie. And my vote, likewise, is going to be to revoke you today. So you've got two votes to revoke. Your, uh, your parole has been revoked today. So good luck to you, sir. Yeah, Christopher John, I guess, which is here. And he's, he won't tell you anything about his personal life. Mm -hmm. You know, John, where do you live at? Well, Put a shirt on him. Benicia put a shirt on him. Yeah. 
Hi, Ms. Sims. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. The Committee on Parole is called to order. Uh, today's date is, uh, the time is 927. Uh, our next case is going to be Mr. Gennaro Sims. Mr. Sims, would you please uh, give us your full name and DOC number? Gennaro Sims, 412-045. Mr. Sims, this is a, a revocation hearing uh, today. Uh, I want to go over our process with you. First, I'm going to read, uh, I'm going to go over with you your parole revocation questionnaire, and then I'm going to go through uh, the allegations that are alleged, reasons uh, alleged that you have violated your parole. And then I'm going to ask you as to each violation or alleged violation, how do you plead? Guilty? Not guilty? Guilty with the statement or not guilty with the statement? And then at the appropriate time, those persons who wish to speak, we'll allow them to have their input. You have several people here speaking on your behalf. Your mother, Ms. Diana Sims, is here. Uh, you have an attorney, Ms. Kat Kearney. Uh, you have uh, your child's mother, uh, Trinesha Glover, and a member of the defense team, Ms. Mia Barr. Uh, would uh, Ms. Kearney please uh, make an appearance for the record? Yes, this is Kat Kearney representing Gennaro Sims. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, and we also have in opposition uh, Agent Bertrand, who was your parole officer. So uh, do you have your uh, parole revocation questionnaire before you? No, yes, sir. Okay. Uh, is that your signature at the bottom of the page? Or did you not sign it? There's an X there. Never got a chance to sign it. Okay. Well, let's go over it. Uh, are the answers, have you had an opportunity to look over the answers? Yeah. Are those answers accurate and correct? Yes, sir. And you are represented uh, today by Ms. Kearney? Yes, sir. Are you ready to proceed with our hearing? Yes, sir. Okay, the first allegation is that on May the 31st of 2023, you were arrested by the New Orleans Police Department for resisting an officer, resisting arrest by refusing to give identity and simple assault. The charges of resisting an officer or resisting arrest by refusing identity are still being screened, apparently, in the uh, New Orleans uh, District Attorney's Office. The yes. Sorry, there's an update to that. Um, should I provide that now or wait? Yes, you can. Um, on Friday, um, Mr. Sims pled guilty to refusing ID. 
and the simple assault charge and the other resisting charge were null prost by the district attorney. Yeah, the simple assault charge initially was no probable cause was found by the magistrate, but he's actually pled guilty to the uh, resisting by refusing identity and the other resisting charge was dismissed. That's correct. Yes. So how would, uh, what is his plea today? I read, I read the well, um, plea on which on which one as far as the um, the identity. Well, on May the thirty first of twenty twenty three, the way these things are written, it's very difficult to be able to to, to make a statement. So I'm going to read a couple of things. Okay, on March the thirty first of twenty twenty three, you were arrested by the New Orleans Police Department for resisting an officer, resisting arrest, refusing identity, and simple assault. That is a fact, so no one disputes that. The charges uh, of resisting an officer, resisting uh, by uh, refusing identity, uh, we're still in the screening process. That's no longer true. We now know that you pled guilty to the refusing identification, so I assume to that allegation you plead guilty, to the others you plead not guilty. Is that fair to say? Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, finally, to date, you are $630 in arrears on your supervision fees and have failed to remit any payments since being released on supervision. How do you plead for that? Those um, payments are paid all the way out, sir. Okay, you've paid. I know I, I have I have proof that you paid $600. You still owe 30. Have you paid the remaining 30 as well? I think those 30 paid too, sir. All right. So I'll, I'll put not guilty with the statement. Uh, okay. Your case has been assigned to me. So, uh, I am, uh, I'm going to start asking some questions of you. Okay. So tell me what happened on May the 31st of 2020. What happened was, I went around an area that I haven't been around in a minute, saw some older people that I knew decided to get out and speak to him. That's when the officer pulled up and was calling me, telling me to come to the car. And I'm being honest, I asked him for what what I'd done. Let him raise my shirt up, let him see that I wasn't doing nothing. You know, like, what you want with me? Why you want me to come to the car, officer? He kept telling me to come in here, no reason to tell me why I had to come to the car. He just was like, come here, come here, come here, out of everybody that was out there. So I kind of like, was getting scared, worrying, like, why he want me to come in and telling me what I'd done or nothing. I basically walked off, knowing, reading on the law book and stuff, and being honest, I walked off. He jumped out the car and just started coming after me, and I kind of got scared and just ran from him. That's when they apprehended me, and they read my rights and stuff, and then you come back and was asking me my name, and I told him that I wanted to talk to my lawyer, you know? And from there, it's just they took me to the hospital because they had was doing all type of stuff, roughing me up, searching me wrong, sticking his fingers all through my butt cheeks, trying to find stuff. And then they, you know, brought me to the hospital. I kind of like um, told them I wanted to talk to Integrity Beaver about the officer behavior from him, you know, searching me wrong, putting his fingers and up my buttocks and. That's when the lady, Kimberly Hunt, I think her name, came, spoke to me. I initially went down to Central Lockup. When I went to Central Lockup, I was just charged with two charges. But I guess once they found out who I was, because I never told them my name or nothing, uh, they fingerprinted, found out who I was. That's when the officer come back, and he must have found out that I told the integrity bureau, the lady, about what he did. He come back and he put a simple assault charge on me to mess over me and put a parole hold on. Me. All right. Well, let's let's talk a little bit about it. you got paroled on June the 11th of 2022, right? Yes, sir. What were you doing? What have you done? Or what were you doing before you were arrested on May the 31st of 2023? What were I doing? Um, right. Is that right? Yes, sir. I was working. Okay, so almost a year, 11 months. What were you doing in those 11 months? Where were you living? What were you, were you working? Yes, sir. I got my own. What kind of work were you doing? 
I, I started a pressure washer business and a car wash business and exposed to the paperwork showing that I'm registered. Yeah, right. I, I, we're just talking right now. We, we'll get to, I'm, I'm, I'm going, if I want some proof or something, I'll ask. Okay. Right. So was, how often were you working? I was working every, like Monday through Friday. And I was also uh, being a father, going home with, with my kid's mother, yeah. tending to her, going to all the apartments. Being a father, to trying to stay out there with the. Let, let me let me ask you a question. Do you have a nickname? No, sir. Anybody call you Gutta or Gouda? G U T T A. That was something that was way when I was a kid. I'm no longer. Well, is that is that a nickname that you've been called? When I was a kid, long time right. ago. Is that written anywhere in your rap sheet or anything like that? So I never told nobody that. Well, the officer said he recognized you as Gouda or Gutter, whatever that name is. I believe someone. Well, well, let me think. The police report suggests that he recognized you as someone who he had information that might have been dealing drugs in that neighborhood. Why would he say that? If, if, if is that your nickname? It's a nickname you had many years ago. Why would he say that? Sir, that was um like when I came to jail last time when I before I got out, that was something that that somebody had said then. So I guess they went back off of that and tried to hook me up with this by saying things. But Mister Mister Sims, let me let let me let me say something to you right now. Okay, I have read your report. I have read everything about that report. I am sympathetic in some respects to you and what happened to you. But I'll be damned if I'm going to sit here and let you lie to me. I won't. I, wouldn't. I want to know exactly what happened. Now, if you tell me exactly what happened that night, then you might get a favorable vote from me. But if you don't, then you're not going to get one. And let me tell you where I'm coming from. I have read your report. You weren't reporting to your parole officer. You were not home when you were supposed to be home. You called your parole officer. You complained and you screamed at them about harassing your mother because they were looking for you. You got an anger issue. Now, that doesn't justify anything the police might have done to you. But had you behaved yourself that night and just shut up and answered their questions, we wouldn't be sitting here. That I can vouch and say you're right on that. If I would have just cooperated, I wouldn't be here. I so can't. why didn't you? I apologize. Huh? So why didn't you? If you didn't, you know, I, look, I've been in the criminal justice system for 50 years. I was a defense lawyer, a prosecutor, and a judge. So I know what the law is, and I know all about what cops do sometimes and what happens to people out there. But you're on parole, okay? And I know laymen say, well, if you didn't do anything, why did you run? Well, I know people run even when they don't do anything. So I want to know why you did what you did that night when that officer approached you. So tell me that. Yeah, just always being a rash bomb. It was a situation going on, on, ongoing situation with my lawyer, Wayne Wright. Those officers also shot at me before for no reason. And I had a complaint on them. So it's like, I'm scared of them. Wayne Wright is my lawyer. Whoa, whoa, complaint on who? Those officers of the first district, the same officers. The, the lawyer that I had was Wayne Wright, Gary Wayne Wright. He I know Gary. He got the recordings. You can call him right now. He had the recordings. He gave it to so the. So you knew Officer Bell? I don't know him by by face. I can't say which ones. I uh, won't lie and say yeah. Right. I know. Okay. But, okay. but I know. Did know that. you by your nickname? I never saw that officer before, sir. Never. I never could say that this is an officer that I had encountered with. I don't know who he is. My lawyer asked me that. I can't say that. Okay. So, so so now tell me what happened and why you did what you did. Why did you run? Scared. I can't give you no other reason because I'd be lying. I was scared. I didn't know what to do. I knew now, the police report suggests that you had a backpack at some point. 
that was gone. It was thrown away when you made your 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 runaway or whatever you did to get away. So they got cameras all around and please find a way to get those cameras. And it was sure I never had a book sack. That, that could corroborate with my statements. They also said they found a live nine millimeter round on you. Did you have a bullet in your pocket? None that I recall of. He, I saw the well, bullet. Uh, uh, come on. Don't give me that don't recall business. Did you have one or didn't you? I didn't have no gun, no, no bullet on me, no gun on me, no nothing, sir. I didn't have none of that on me, sir. So they have a bullet in evidence, supposedly. And they say they found it on you. That's not true. Sir, I didn't have a bullet on me, sir. I can't say that I have one. I, I, I can admit that's not a crime. I didn't have one. I can admit to that. That's not a crime, but. So what, what happened? Tell me exactly what happened. Where were you when the officer saw you and, and you decided to either run or walk away or whatever you did? Tell me exactly what you did. I was talking to a woman and an older guy that was out there. And he was talking and the police pulled, they, actually they pulled up first, saw us out there. Then they pulled off and then came back on that corner, sir. And just was telling me to come here. And I was just trying to ask why, what was the reason why did I have to come to that car? He just, he never gave me a direct statement. I like saying I done something, I'm a suspect or not something. So that's why I kind of like with the getting scared, like what do you want with me? I also raised my shirt up, sir, to show him that I'm not doing anything. I have nothing on me. You know, he's not being truthful and telling y'all exactly what went on. If you can get those cameras that's out there, that will corroborate with everything. I tried everything that I could. Well, I want to know what you did. What did you do after you pulled up your shirt to show him you didn't have anything? I turned around, let him ask him, like, officer, what do you want with me? He like, come here. He was trying to use his authority to make me come. And I was like, officer, what did I do? Tell me what did I do? He was like, come in. I'm like, man, I don't know what this is about. So I walked off. I'm being honest. He jumped now, out did the you walk off or did you run off? I walked off. He jumped and out. Where the did you go? I went to walking up the street. That's when he got out the car and went to coming behind me. And I well, looked. he said you got in an elevator. Did you ever get in any kind of an elevator? Yes, after I ran up the street. And okay, ran. well, tell me what all you did. I, you you I walked ran. down the street and then what did you do? He came, I ran, I ran through the, the, the um behind the building, then I hopped the fence, and I hopped the fence, I went up trying to get into the elevator. Uh the officer then came up in there. Uh the elevator was closing. He stuck his hand up in there trying to like, you know, open stop from closing. Uh that's when the officer I see he got his gun on me. And he was like, you know, like telling me to freeze, freeze, freeze. And I'm still scared. And I just ran from out the elevator, you know what I'm saying? On him. And he came running behind me. And that's when I was hitting, hiding someplace up in the building. And that's when I guess the, one of the people that was standing there, lived there, whatever, uh, out there, happened to see me going to the hiding spot that I was at. That's when they told the officer where I was at. That's when the officers came right there and, you know, did whatever they did, you know, pulled me out there threw me to the ground and everything. And that's when this bullet just come out. And he was like, get that, get that, get that. And I'm looking at it and I, I just shut up. I ain't seen nothing. It was bumping to the police car. Uh, I couldn't breathe. I kept letting them know I couldn't breathe and this and that. Duh. That's when they called the EMS. The EMS came and that's when the officer take me back, back from out the car. And he went to improperly searching me putting his hands between my cheeks and stuff and i yelled out to him i'm like no get your hand between from between my cheeks and that's when they took me to the hospital i go, to, go to the hospital for? i go there for breathing not breathing several things they had the handcuffs so tight on me it's it's all type of stuff my wrist they hurt in my wrist uh -huh. uh i hit my head also when i was running my chin i, I guess I don't know how I hit the chin. I'm being honest. I can't say the police officer done that. I think maybe me hopping over what I would hop there and I felt face down on it, but kind of like blacked me out a little bit, you know. Uh uh then I was in the hospital letting them know what the officer done to me. I told him I wanted to talk to somebody. Right. Well, tell me, tell me why you were having so much trouble. Why was your parole officer having so much trouble getting in touch with you? 
my parole officer would come there early in the morning to my house. And I wasn't there in the morning because I was going trying to get my business started. You know, I leave out early in the morning working, trying to find jobs working and stuff, you know, with my company, trying to get that going. You know, that was the only reason why I wasn't there. I, I got 10 churn all together. Two of them is my grand churn. I support that, that, my- Mr. Sims, Mr. Sims, on January the 24th of 2023, he tried to get in touch with you. Went to your place, no contact. January 25th of 2023, no contact. February 13th of 2023, no contact. February 14th of 23, no contact. February 17th of 23, you called him very angry, screaming and hollering at him. February 22nd, 23, no contact. February 24th of 23, phone contact. March 28th of 23, no contact. April 19th, 23, no contact. May 16th, 23, no contact. Finally, on June 1st, you were arrested. So, you know, why couldn't your parole officer get in touch with you? You know, here I got a guy. What about the times I told him? Let, let me finish. Here I got a guy whose parole officer is trying to get in touch with him, can't get in touch with him. And when he finally talks with him, you scream and holler at him. And then you get arrested. And then you smart off to the cops and you run. Now, what's wrong with that picture? Sir, I can't recall all those times that he contacted me. I talked to him on the phone and everything, letting him know about my business and everything. I so told- why did you scream and holler at him when you talk to him on the phone? So you deny that he's here. So we can hear from him. He's right there. I don't see me hollering at him. You may have took that the wrong way the way I talk. You may have thought I was hollering at him. I have a deep verse and I do talk a little loud at times, you know. I can't say, I can't be a little adamant about saying, like, no, you know, I'll be talking up. Like, as he talking, I might be like, no, no, that wasn't it. I'm doing, you know, I can't say. That's a problem that I have to deal with that I'm working on every day. I know I do not know how to communicate right. You know what I'm saying? So I can just say that I'm sorry and I regret it if he felt like that I was talking, yelling at him, but that wasn't my intentions. That's not something I do when I know that he holds. Let me, let me, ask, you a question. Let me ask you a question. If you had to do this all over again, what might you do different with your parole officer? What might you have done differently with your parole officer? Checking with him every day, every every other week, would let him know exactly what's going on. Updating him on my whereabouts, my where I'm living, how how I'm going, how my business is taking off, or whatever. You know, I, I wouldn't keep things away from him, but I just. It's what noise. might you have done differently the night the policeman saw you and asked you to come to see, come over to him? What might you have done differently that night? I realized that I was wrong all the way around with that because reason why I've read into the law book and I noticed that an officer, have, if they know that you're on parole, that they have the right to stop you. That's something I didn't know to ask. So now I'm informed on that. And I would have laid up there and went to that car and talked to him and see what was the problem, you know. But I'm being honest with you, it escaped me the hell to death. But that's something I know that I have to go on and face my fears and do. I'm sorry that I've done that because it ended me up in here, making me miss my kids, my kid being born. Uh, it's a whole lot I lost out on. It's a whole lot I'm losing out on. Um, I'm sorry for everything I did that that a person made it uh, may reflect that I was doing any kind of wrong when I know that it, my intention was on it to do right out there and provide for my family. I mean, that's my first time ever getting in trouble that day. Uh, and with the parole officer, just basically, he's saying that I wasn't there responding because I was so busy trying to... Let me ask you this. Do you have some injuries on your left hand? Yes, sir. What? Show me what you got. This finger right here been shot off and just just replaced and uh, reattached. And this one right here too. Can you move those fingers at all? I could do that. I can't can't do this. Can't make a fist. Can't ball them up. I can't write with them. Can't do nothing. And I'm moving this these three fingers really. Tell me about your family. 
You have children? Yes, sir. How many have, children do you have? I have 10 all together. Um, two of them is my grandchildren that I call my kids. Uh, well, who were you living with while you've been out on parole for the last 11 months? I've been with my moms right there. Okay. And where are your children? And how old are your children? Uh, one of them, 19, one of them, like, 23. I have a stepson I also call mine, too, that I raised since he was a kid, you know? Uh, he's, like, 24. Uh, I have my other kids who's with their mother, uh, and I have a younger kid who with his mother, he's, who's nine, who's 11 years old, and I just had a kid that was born June 26th of this year. And you I was... A grandchild born, you said? No, my own kid. That's Your own child. And yeah, how old is, is he? Six, she's six weeks old. Okay. My grandchildren, they one year. Who is the mother? Huh, sir? Who is the mother and where is she? She's right there, Trenisha Glover. She's right there. Um, were y'all living together? No, sir. Okay. Okay, now we're going to hear from uh, your supporters. Uh, let's hear from uh, Ms. Glover. Um, I'm, I just want to say that um, doing everything, being a, a new mom again after 17 years, it's put a strain on me and me having to do everything on my own. Uh, I just wish that he was here to help me because it would be much more like it would be less stressful. I'm going through um, postpartum stress. And it's just real. It's, it's a big strain on me. And I wish he was here to help me. That's all. Wow. That While he was out, was he supporting you? Was he helping you in any way? Yes. Um, tell, me, tell me how. Every day I would get, um, I would get breakfast and lunch, dinner, and coming to my appointments with me. I had a few, um, I had, a, since I'm 35, I had a geriatric pregnancy. So I had to go to the doctor numerous of times. I was like spotting. He was there. Like it, it was, it was much more better. You know, when he was did he help me. support you financially? Yes. How did he do that? What did he do? He paid my light bill, my, um, my light bill and my car insurance to help me out. And what are your plans for the future? Assuming he gets back on. I need, I need him here with me because I have to get back to my life in order to make money for myself. When you say you need him here with you, do you intend on living with him or what? No, but I intend on him getting this baby so I can do some things for myself. You know, because it's just like I, it's just me, 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 and it's a lot of pressure on me. So a lot of pressure. Thank you very much, Ms. Glover. Uh, now let's hear from uh, Ms. Sims, your mother. Hi, how are you Good doing? Good morning, Ms. Sims. How are you? I'm okay. Tell us what you'd like us to know about uh, your son. Uh, he's my advocate. He's always there for me, making sure I'm taking my medication. He uh, do errands for me when I to make sure I eat the right proper food. I'm uh, asthmatic and I'm a uh, diabetic, and uh, he makes sure that I'm okay. And he do the things around the house to keep the grass and the upkeep of the house uh, up and stuff. And I'm not able at this time to do these things because uh, the weather is hot outside and uh, I have the asthma situation and uh, he was the one seen to go into the store to make sure I had food and water and uh, stuff like that and help towards helping me pay my bills and stuff when I need it. Thank you, Ms. Sims. We appreciate your comments. Uh, let's hear from, uh, I assume, uh, Mrs. Ms. Barr. Yeah. Um, good morning. My name is Mia Barr, and I'm a client advocate in the Client Services Division at the Public Defender's Office. 
Um, I'm speaking today on behalf of my client, Gennaro Sims, whom I've worked closely with over the last month, and I've come to know as deeply thoughtful, intuitive, self-aware, driven, and family-oriented. I've collaborated with Mr. Sims to create a release plan that would allow for safe and secure reentry to the community, and I'm here to respectfully offer an alternative to revocation that will more appropriately address the situation at hand. Since Mr. Sims earned parole last year, he has made enormous strides to reintegrate into the community and change his circumstances. Rather than being a liability to society, Mr. Sims has become an asset to both his family and his community. He is a loving father, partner, and son, and has become a successful entrepreneur. On June 26th, just over a month ago, while he was incarcerated, Mr. Sims's partner gave birth to a baby girl, Princess Tatiana. Princess is now just over a month old and has yet to meet her father. Mr. Sims sees Princess's birth as an opportunity to be an active father and provider, and he is determined to create a different life for her than the life that he has had. Since being released, Mr. S Mr. Sims has founded a successful power washing and car detailing business called Professional Detailing. Prior to starting his business, Mr. Sims had never taken out loans or been approved for a credit card. And Mr. Sims told me that second to his children and grandchildren being born, being approved for both was the best day of his life. His excitement about something that most of us find so mundane is testament to his genuine desire to contribute to society. After earning his high set while previously in DOC custody, he is now eager to pursue further education through Delgado Community College, where he hopes to study economics and business as a mechanism to further advance his business and allow it to grow and expand. Mr. Sims has already been accepted to, to Delgado and his acceptance letter has been submitted as a supplement to the packet or provided earlier. In addition to the concrete steps he has taken, Mr. Sims is looking to ensure he remains free from future incarceration by studying anti-recidivism theory, which he started doing while incarcerated. He is eager to prevent others' recidivism as much as his own and finds great power in understanding theories as to how he can most successfully remain permanently in community. I've referred Mr. Sims to the first 72 plus for re-entry support and services. And through them, he will also have access to the Fountain Fund, which is a nonprofit that provides low interest loans to formerly incarcerated people. Mr. Sims is also highly motivated to work with mental health professionals and engage in talk therapy. And to that end, I've referred him to Jackson Hands of Change, which is an outpatient community-based counseling service that will meet Mr. Sims in the community as he begins to seek therapy. In summary, even in the face of his present circumstances, Mr. Sims has remained steadfast in his determination to return home to his children, partner in business, in order to continue building the life that he is so proud of, as he should be. In addition to his astounding natural community and familial supports, Mr. Sims will have my continued support upon release, and I will remain available to assist in service access and coordination, including compliance with any court and parole requirements. I'm confident that he will succeed in taking full advantage of a second chance by following the release plan in this letter. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Ms. Bach. Uh, Ms. Kearney, I assume you will uh, summarize after uh, Mr. Uh, Sims has an opportunity to speak to us. Yes, sir. Now let's hear from uh, Agent Bertrand. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Um, I've dealt with Mr. Sims prior, also prior to this this parole um, parole time. Um, Mr. Sims has always had a lack of respect for police or authority. Um, at least one other time when we encountered Mr. Sims prior to this parole, that we arrested him on charges, it actually turned into physical uh, physical assault by Mr. Sims which also included attempting to flee in handcuffs uh, when we arrested him at his residence with narcotics. But this, this period on parole from shortly after, and it's not just me that had phone conversations. He actually called and was aggressive and very rude to another supervisor and uh, the front desk personnel that was answering the phone. Um, of all the times I went to the house, I've gotten everything from he left, you know, shortly, you know, at least about seven o'clock. Because if someone as a parole officer, someone tells me what their schedule is, then I know how to work my schedule. Uh, but if you tell me that you leave and you're leaving home at seven o'clock or your family's telling me you're leaving home at seven o'clock and I show up at your house at six in the morning and still nothing. And they can. The only thing I get from the family is 
well, he's here sometimes. Um, and or always oh, just left five minutes before I get there. I've been doing this quite a long time. And to me, that says you're actually not staying there. So by trying to ask Mr. Sims, if you give me the address that you actually stay, then we can, this makes the go a lot easier. But in order to keep saying you stay at the same address and then every conversation I ever have with you when you do return my phone calls, it is always, it is always very aggressive in calling and saying why you talk to my mother because we do question their family. We're, we're trying to avoid situations like this because if we can avoid it getting to this point, then we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. But if he has no, no willingness really to participate in being supervised on parole, then we can't we can't help that. Thank you very much, uh, Agent. We appreciate uh, your comments. Uh, Mr. Sims, is there anything you'd like to say before uh, we turn it over to uh, Ms. Kearney? Uh, I would like to say that um, to Officer Bertrand that I never intended to be in the like hostile way. I talk a little deep and still working on the way that I communicate. And if I have made like I was coming all from, that wasn't my intentions and I'm really sorry. And I never lied to you about where I stay. I really do stay there. And the reason why is because I want to be there for my mom. My mom don't have nobody or somebody backbone. You know, and um, I help my mom. I don't just help my mom. So I help my sister, my niece, my nephew. I feel like I'm the head of that family. I feel like it's a lot that I need to do to support them. I feel like that I don't want to let them know. I feel like that I've been incarcerated all my life. And I feel like before anything happened to my mom, I want to show her that her son is doing right, has changed for the better and accomplished a whole lot. I want to show her that I'm doing good. And the reason why I choose to stay there is because it's, it betters, it helps me manage my money. I don't have to go pay, you know, a rent and nothing nowhere else when I could just help my moms. I really have a room up there. If you ever would have come to my room, you'd have saw how that room has fi been fixed up from when I ain't have nothing up in there. My clothes is up in there. Uh, and I know things may have probably been seemed inaccurate about the times that I was leaving, getting up and going to work and stuff. But all that's truthful. I know it may seem like it wasn't, but it's really truthful. And um, if I can just get the opportunity to get back about that to society, to prove myself, to show the better person I am and where I've learned from my mistakes. And I see where you may feel like that I was doing wrong. And I could acknowledge that. I can acknowledge that. And all I could do is say I'm sorry for that. I'm sorry for wasting your time, from giving you a hassle, from seeming like that I'm a problem or having a problem with authority when I know I'm really not. But I can't stop you from seeing it the way that you see it. So I can work on it and try my best to make you see me and like the way that I want you to see me as. So um, I'm sorry for that. I'm sorry for having to sit in front of the board and waste your time for the footage set. You know, so I'm apologizing for everything and just hoping that I can get a chance to keep accomplishing in life and not have to go back out there to society without nothing and have to start all over again. So all I can just say is I'm sorry for everything, all the misinterpretation Thanks. things. Ms. Kearney? Yeah, so um, I, I just want to say um, that I really believe that Gennaro is a different person than he was. Um, but I think over the last few months, Gennaro and I have talked a lot about his experience with law enforcement and um, and we've talked about what it means now to be given the opportunity to be on parole and to be under parole supervision. And um, I think Gennaro fully understands what it means, what the opportunity is, and that it is a different circumstance than maybe the, the Gennaro has experienced before, which is that parole, his parole officer and parole in general is not, you know, is not trying to 
do anything to harm Gennaro in any way, but rather is there to support him in this opportunity to, to turn his life around, which I really believe that he has. As you heard from Mia, um, for the first time in his life, um, and I, I'm sure you have seen his history, he has he has spent a lot of time um, inside of the DOC. And now, since he's been just in the last year, he has been able to start a successful business. Um, he has, like Mia said, he was approved for credit cards for the first time, which I for myself is is pretty a mundane thing, but I think it shows that his excitement about that demonstrates how excited Gennaro is to become a contributing member of society um, and how motivated he is to do that. And um, I've spoken at length with his mother and with Trinisha and some other family and friends and about not just his clear investment in his business and in supporting his family, but as Trinisha said, he went to all of her doctor appointments with Princess um, he was very much looking forward to becoming her very active father in Princess's life, as he has with his other children. Um, and I really, as he said to you, this was a situation where some he felt threatened by police officers, but also I think some of his his old experiences with authority came up um, in his head. And I think, you know, he has experienced some trauma in that and he had a, had a reaction. Um, and he understands now, um, you know, what it means to be paroled and, and the need to control those reactions and to respond in a way that um, that is appropriate for specifically for his parole officer, given that his parole officer is there to support him. Um, I'll also say that, as Mia said, um, he's very interested in therapy. Gennaro has, is very um, self-aware um, in the way that he understands, you know, as he was speaking about his communication, um, that he is looking for support. And we are very excited to give him that support so that he can work through some of that. And so he has a chance, I'm sure you all are aware of, sometimes trauma reactions can happen without thinking. And I think his, his, um, engagement in mental health will help him have those skills where he can, um, instead of having that reaction happen automatically, um, he will have a minute to process and to think and respond in the way that he wants to respond. Um, because like I said, this is a different Gennaro than, than he was in the past. Um, and, and I think this is kind of the last piece for him in being able to address some of those experiences he's had in the past so that moving forward, he can respond to his parole officer and law enforcement in a way that is in, in, um, is congruent with what he would like to present to society. Um, so I would ask, what we are asking is that um, you consider a technical violation rather than a revocation in this circumstance. Gennaro has taken responsibility as you know for um for refusing to identify himself to the police officers um i would also just note in terms of that case i think um as Gennaro says they are familiar they know who Gennaro is um and i think that they believed that he was doing something that he was not um they believe that he had a, a firearm on him um and i think Gennaro knows and and as you spoke to um it might have been able to be cleared up more much more quickly if Gennaro had had spoken to the police but he you know he felt scared and he ran away and that's what got us into this situation um and in the future as I said, with the support of our office, with the support of his family, this is not a situation that Gennaro will be in again. Um, and he fully understands what the opportunity, the opportunity of parole and the need to be in regular contact with his parole officer, who's really, you know, who is there to help him in this process. Um, so I would just ask the board to um, consider a technical violation and allow Gennaro to return to the life that he is, he is you know, finally being able to build in just the last year um, and and know that he has not just the support of his family, but the full support of our office in getting all the services he needs, specifically mental health services to help him begin to process um, and, and to respond differently in the future. Thank you very much. Appreciate your comments. Can I, I have, say something have, one more time? Can I say one more thing, please, if you no, don't mind? No, sir. Right. I recommend executive session to discuss confidential matters related to this case. Second. There's been a, a, a motion and second for executive session to discuss confidential matters. Please call the roll. Yes. 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 Uh, we're going to go into executive session to discuss confidential matters. Uh, uh, we will be adjourned momentarily. We'll return with, with a decision. Third.
Okay, Mr. Sims. Mr. Sims. Uh, yes, yes, sir. You know, th this, this isn't an easy case. And the reason it's not an easy case is because of you and your attitude. I'm gonna be very honest with you. Uh, you know, you've got, you've got a, a expiration date coming up fairly soon. If, if you had more time to serve, I probably would sit here and say, I'm going to revoke you, send you back to prison and get you to do some more programs. But you're going to get out pretty soon, regardless of what we do today. And I, I, I just want to tell you a few things. Number one, I don't doubt that maybe those cops didn't target you. I don't doubt there was a lot of extenuating circumstances about that arrest. I don't know whether you had a gun or you didn't have a gun. We won't know that answer. Uh, but you ended up in jail because you ran. And you got a serious attitude problem. And, and let me tell you something. Officer Bertrand, I was expecting him to get up here and tell me how bad you were and put your butt in jail. But he did. He was very straightforward and very honest about what he's been trying to do with you. If you can't get along with that man, you ain't going to be able to get along with anybody. And that's a real problem. Now, your lawyer and, and your, your, uh, your advocate with the public defender's office have a plan. They've got something hopefully that will help you you know you've been around a long time you've been in jail a lot of times you've been arrested a lot of times you've been convicted a lot of times you know the, you know the role you know the rope. you know this is no news to you if you don't change you're going to end up in prison and you'll never get out or you're going to get shot one night doing something so you better change your lifestyle you've been helping your mother that's a good thing you got a baby that you need to take care of. That's a good thing. So I'm going to give you a break. My vote, one vote. My vote is do not revoke with the following special conditions. Number one, that you follow religiously the plan that's been outlined by the, the public defender's office in New Orleans, which includes going to uh, first 72 plus uh, doing those things. I want you to report to your parole officer weekly, every week until you get off of parole. Now that's a phone call, that's a text, that's whatever. But some communication to your parole officer, whoever that is, where you are and what you're doing. And one of the things that I want to make sure, and I'm not sure that it was in the package, but I want you to take a, a significant long-term anger management. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. I'm just one vote. But, you know, Mr. Sims, if you don't change your attitude, and, and you, you, this is going to happen to you time and time again. So good luck to you. Ms. Wise. Oh, thank you, Chairman. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Sims, I've listened, I've listened, I've gone, I've gone back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Uh, and I'm a retired probation parole officer. Yeah. I, I and you know, I've dealt with knuckleheads like you. And you just did, you just want to be a knucklehead. And uh, but you got to see uh how you're not winning. First of all, I don't understand why you out at night at eight o'clock at night just hanging out and you got 10 children. You know, you need to be inside. You know the road. You know how the officers drive through and all that. Don't put yourself in those situations. Find right. some other kind of place to be that time of the evening so you won't come in contact with that because you already know. And then yeah. when it happens, you act like you're surprised. And that makes no sense. I agree. You, change, you, you got to change what you do for entertainment, what you're doing out at night. I mean, you, you just you don't need to be out there. You're too old for that. So, but I'm, I feel inclined because of the, the case that's presented today. You got some help. You can't say nobody never helped you because you had a lot of help you today. If you take advantage of it, we will know. 
But I'm gonna take a chance on you. I'm gonna vote the do not revoke, and I concur with all the special conditions set forth by Mr. Mayor Bell. And if you got a question about it, you you need to call. If if it's Ms., if your officer is not in, ask me to talk to the supervisor. Speak kindly, you know. And if you have to leave a voicemail message, say that my name is so and so and so. I still live at so and so and so, and I'm just checking in. I, nobody's answering the call. I'm just checking in. You got to do your due diligence. It's called being humble. It's something you have to get, yeah, hold your head down because that's what that's called being humble. Because you want to get off supervision and stay off. Best wishes to you, sir. Thank you, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Freeman. Okay, uh, Mr. Sims, that's no use for me to reiterate everything they said. I think you're totally lying about you at your mother's house. Telling him you were going to be there at seven, leaving at six. I don't think you were staying there. Point blank, end of story. I was a probation officer for 35 years. So I, I dealt with a few more than Ms. Wise. Mm -hmm. uh, you have no respect for law enforcement. Uh, law enforcement, you have no respect for authority. And that's your whole problem. You think you know it all. Uh, my vote today is to revoke. Um, I just wish you did have more time to do. You are a seventh felony offender. If you hadn't learned by now, these last two months in jail hadn't taught you nothing. So my vote's to revoke. Thank you, Mr. Freeman. Uh, you have two votes to uh, to uh, continue you on parole with special conditions uh, and one vote to deny. So uh, you'll be paroled. I mean, you'll be uh, released. Uh, with the following conditions, and that is you will follow religiously the outline that's set forth by the Public Defender's Office of New Orleans. Uh, you will attend a long-term anger management program, and you will report weekly in some fashion to your parole officer. That parole officer will dictate how you report to him or her, okay? Yes, sir. Uh, I it's up to you, Mr. Sims. You can you can change your attitude. You can you can try to get along, or you can keep doing what you're doing, and you're likely to end up back in prison. So good luck to you. That's something I don't. That's a place I don't want to be the rest of my life. And I can acknowledge and admit that I have an anger problem, and that's been my downfall my whole life. It's crumbled me in so many ways and areas, and I'm trying to work on it frivolously. I don't want that to be a burden on me and keep on setting me back in life. I've acknowledged that. Well, I, I hope you can do something about it. So good luck to you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you.
It's destiny. Yes, ma'am. Destiny. She must be muted. She's uh, she muted. I'm not gonna mute her. Billy? Yeah, I hear you. Good morning. Uh, the parole committee, committee on parole is called back to order. The time is 1035. Our panel members are Ms. Pearl Wise, Mr. Pete Freeman. My name is Tony Marabella. I'll be acting as chair. Uh, our remote location is Tinsaw Correctional Center. Uh, Mr. Uh, Washington, is there anyone from Tinsaw Parish Correctional Center there with you right now? Yes, yes, sir. Okay. Uh, would they, would the staff there please introduce themselves? Hi, happy Tuesday. How are you guys this oh, morning? Hi, happy Tuesday. We're doing very well. Thank you. M Lit, L I T T. Thank you very much. Uh, our, our, our case there is uh, Mr. Why Billy Washington. Mr. Washington, would you please yes. introduce yourself and give us your DOC number? Billy, my name is Billy Washington. My DOC number is 428998. Mr. Washington, I want to explain our process to you. First, I'm going to read some information into the record, and then we're going to conduct a parole interview with you. At the appropriate time, we will allow those persons who indicate they wish to speak to, to have their say. Uh, speaking here on your behalf today are your two sisters, Destiny Washington and Kamora Washington. Uh, after we have that, uh, after we hear them speak, uh, you'll have an opportunity to say whatever you'd like to say to the board, then we'll vote. You understand our process? Yes, sir. This is Billy A. Washington, DOC number 428998, date of birth, October the 19th of 1980. He's a fifth felony offender. He has a parole eligibility date of September the 29th of 2023, an adjusted good time date of 1231 of 32 in a full-term date of June 29th of 2033. He is currently uh, serving a 13-year sentence on two counts of domestic abuse battery, possession with intent to distribute methamphetamines with, in, in which he was adjudicated a habitual offender, uh, possession of uh, cocaine, possession of etizolam, and fluoprazolam. So you have uh, three separate possession of uh, drug charges, felony drug charges, as well as a possession with intent to distribute methamphetamines. Is that information fairly accurate, sir? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Your case has been assigned to Ms. Pearl Wise. She will begin our interview process. Would you please answer any questions she may have? Good morning, sir. Good morning. How you doing? All right. Good, good. Uh, tell us how long you've been in jail on this charge. Three years and a month. Three years and a month. But you you just got sentenced in 2022. So you were in jail since the arrest? Yes. You were? Okay. So how long you was in jail? When did you got go to jail? Um, I don't know if it's like, oh, I went to jail the 4th of July. On the 4th, 4th of July. July of when? Um, 21. Of 2021. Of 2021. And you had just got released on, on 2018. So you were back in 2021. Yeah. Uh, you're a fifth offender. How, how much of your how many years would you say you served in jail of your life? Um about, about, 10, uh -huh. about, ten, about 10 years. Right. And how old are you today? 42 years old. You're 42 years old. Okay. Yeah. Um the thing that, that uh you you've done three years on a 13-year sentence, and you've completed Steve Hall, right? Yes, ma'am. How was it? What did you learn? I learned uh, uh, 27 risk factors. I learned um, parenting, anger management, um, job readiness, thinking, thinking of a chance. Uh, thank you for a change. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for a change. Okay, but I, I, just tell me about two things that you learned that you did not already know at uh, the state has spent a lot of money on that treatment program for you. I need yeah. to hear what you learned. Yeah, I learned the 27 risk factors. I learned that. Um, so, so, what are your risk factors? Um, for, for around, um, put myself in people and places um, that I shouldn't be, be in. I learned about drugs that I shouldn't have never took. I learned about, I hurt, I ain't just hurt myself, I hurt my family. More than anything. 
I learned um, a lot about job, job readiness, because I didn't really know about jobs. Mm -hmm. I learned about um, parenting. What did you learn in parenting? About um, providing for my um, child, not, not being there for, not there, being there for is, is a big problem. Provide from a, from a child. Okay, because the one that's one of the things that uh, that was uh, quite disturbing for me. Uh, the police report that I read indicated that when when these crimes took place, there was a six year old child in the home, and then there was another child in the home. I, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. So, what, I mean, what about the trauma on those children? What do you what did you come to know about that? I know that I I I ain't put a good Example for my niece and my nephew and my um, stepdaughter by arguing with my um, person I was in love with before in front of them. I wasn't a good example. What else? That um, it's not it's not right to be arguing in front of them. Um, but you weren't just arguing though. You you were not just arguing. Let's 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 not. Let's be truthful here. You weren't just yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. They oh. they witnessed they witnessed other things, didn't they? Tell tell me what they witnessed. Yes, ma'am. I, I I pushed her. I pushed her. I know I should never put my hand. You don't ever put put your hands on on women, for one. You know I don't want that's could scar them for life. Put your hands on women, and this time that's not good. That's not good. That's not a good. I I was a bad role model for my um. Especially my nephew be putting my hands on a woman in front of him. That, that so so one of the children that was your child was your daughter? Stepdaughter and my step nephew. And your nephew. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Have you had have you had an opportunity to talk with them about that? Yes, sir. My nephew. I told him that um what I did in front of him was was, was not good. And um you gotta be be a don't do nothing like I did. Don't follow my shoes. Like always, be good to a woman. Never put your hands on on a, on a female. Like I, how, how old is that? How old is that child now? Um, your nephew. Fifteen. Okay. I think he was thirteen at the time. Well, that's the, the report said there was a six year old in in the house. A six year old. Yeah, that's what I read. Okay, maybe not. Maybe not. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. It was a six-year-old child in there because he, you know, he tried to stop you. Oh uh, yes, yeah. Oh yes, 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 ma'am. Harlem, mother's uh -huh. stepson. He was oh, the. Okay. Yes, 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 ma'am. Um, so you hadn't talked to him yet, Harlem. No, ma'am. Never talked to him. Never talked to him. But you need to. Yes, ma'am. And the best thing you need to do is be a better example going forward for him. Right. Yes, ma'am. Uh, you heard the term trauma, right? You heard that uh, term, yeah. Yes, ma'am. Those kids were traumatized. That well, was just like being in a war zone, where yes. they witnessed in the home, yes, based on police support. And yes. I and I know more happened than what we got written down. I know. So were you on drugs or alcohol during this time? Yes, ma'am. I was on drugs. That's no excuse, though. No, ma'am. There was no excuse at all. So tell us, so you went to Steve Hall and you completed that May 26th or 23rd. So what's yes. your sobriety plan? If you get released today, how are you going to stay clean and soap? AA meetings, stay away from um, negative negative people, and just move forward and the things I learned. Um, I signed up for a, a, a shot. Good, good, good. For Jesus in my life. How long you been? How long you been drug free now, as of today? Um, three years now. Is this the longest you've been clean? Yes, ma'am. Okay, good. Uh, I see you got your high set in in 2010 uh, while you were incarcerated. Yes, ma'am. That's good. Do you have a trade? No, ma'am. I just um, I know how to cook real good and. Work up. I do working, working on the, um, on trees, cutting trees down. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. 
that, that's, uh, that's good. Now, I do want to inform you as a part of this process, we reach out to the law enforcement community. Uh, that's the judge, the VA, and the police department to get their opinion about early release. And they are all opposed to your early release. I mean, you are you're a fifth offender, but you got seven felony arrests. So, that's you know, right. that's um, that's something, you know, they could got to consider. Now, look at your supervision history, and you got revoked. Uh, 2001, 2009, 2015, 2008. So what's going to be different this time? You got to, if you're successful today, you got a pretty long parole supervision period. Yes, man. I'm, gonna, I'm moving to a, just uh, this is gonna be my first first time away from where I grew up at. Moving to another environment. Where and, you moving to? Um, Hammond, Hammond, Louisiana. Uh huh. And I got a, I got three jobs set up. Uh huh. Um, I got stem. I got just received the stem to check on my uh, on my books. So I I have money to start mm -hmm. to uh, okay. while while I'm working to provide for the stuff I need. Okay. Uh, uh, who you been living with in, with in Hammond? My mom. Oh, your mother has moved. Yes, ma'am. Okay. What kind of what kind? Of, so you say you're a cook and you can cut trees. So that, that's what you're kind of trying to find jobs in, in that area. Yes, ma'am. And probably trying to stay clean and sober. And I, I do want to inform you uh, that the victim is unopposed uh, to your early release. Uh, uh, and that was gracious of her. To, uh, yeah, she, she's not against you getting out early. She, uh, so what do you do every day now in the prison? Um, I read my Bible, put God first, and I just stay focused on the, my AA and mm -hmm. my family. I know. I'm more about family more than anything now because I know I hurt. I know I hurt them about okay. coming to jail and not being there for them when they need me. Okay. Instead of being around negative people that not even not in my life life right now. Uh, the record so you have one child. So what's the age of your child? Three. Your child is three. It's a girl. Yes, ma'am. Okay. She was three months when. I, Three months when I come to jail, and I see three years old. Is Miss Robinson the mother? Yes, ma'am. Oh, okay. The one that's uh, that was the victim in this. Okay. Uh, then you do have a moderate tiger. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, okay. Well, that's all I had. Thank you for answering my questions. I just listen. Mr. Freeman. Okay. Uh, one quick question. You do have that one child with the victim. Are y'all still seeing each other? Yes. Yes, sir. She let me see my daughter every, every twice, like twice a week, on video visit. Oh, okay. Okay, that's good. And you be in that little, in that in your daughter's life. Um, so you planning on getting back together with her when y'all get when you get out? Yes, sir. Hey, you know things got to got to change. They got to be different. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Good no felony way. offender. Are you serious at your age? Officer, I'll stop the officer. Uh, Miss Lynn. Miss Lynn. Excuse me, Miss Lynn. Hey, come on. Come on, Cap. Miss Lynn. Miss Lynn. She's trying to take care of something. Oh, man. Yes. Hey, how y'all doing? Fine. And you? All right, so, all right. We want to know how this young man been doing. Does he have any write-ups? What he do? How is he performing? No, Billy is good. He has been in class. He's completed his classes and everything. What classes has he taken? Sure. You mentioned no classes. No, he didn't. Uh-uh. He said he didn't. Read it. Read it. Read it. Your your certificates. What you got from class? Yeah. I got. I got MRT. Okay. Um, parenting. Okay. Well, you got to see one. Anger management. Is that a steam hole or you got it right there? Or did, or did you get that while you're there? Right here. I, 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 just, I just came to the jail yesterday. Oh, okay. Then. They, okay. Shipped, they shipped me here yesterday. And we, we looked at um his things. He, had, has, he hasn't had any write-ups. Yes, ma'am. All right. Any write-ups? We looked at that when he first got here. Thank you, ma'am. Appreciate it. Yes, ma'am. 
Oh, so you just got there yesterday. Well, the, those uh, certificates, you earned those at Steve Hall. Is that yes, right? Yes, okay. ma'am. So yeah, those are in the file. Okay, good, good. Thank you, officer. I appreciate it. Anything else you want us to know? Um, but like I said, you just got him, so you don't know much about him yet. Oh, but he quiet. Well, that, that look for this little one day, put it like that. <laughs> but we read his thing. He know no write-ups at all. That's good. Good to see you. Thank you. Appreciate okay. you, officer. Thank you. Thank you, officer. Now we'll hear from your sister, uh, Destiny Washington. Ms. Washington, if you would please introduce yourself and tell us what you want us to know about your brother. Yes, um, I'm him. I'm his baby sister. Um, I'm staying in Hammond, like right down the road from my my mom. Um, it's it's only three of us. My big sister, he's the oldest, and. I feel as long as he's not where he used to be, he he will be perfectly fine. Like my mom is like sick right now. He's the only one really like take care of her. Like she's she's picky. She got a pick, and he he is the pick. Mm -hmm. Like I try not to be jealous sometimes, but it it gets to me. Yeah. <laughs> or like. He haven't even had a chance to even hold, hold his daughter. Like it's, I think as long as he's not around the environment and running the streets, we got him. We got him a job set up. We got him a room set up at my mom's house. He he would be per perfectly fine. I would be there, be right by his side. I just want him to do do good. Thank you, ma'am. Now we hear from uh, Kamora, Washington. I'm the middle child of us three. Billy is not a bad person. He just made bad decisions. And as long as he don't communicate with the same friends, because as I told him, his friends is not his friends. We, all three of him, all three of us need him to take care of my mom, his child, I need him to be a role model for my son because my son looks up to him. That's the only uncle he has. Um, I think this, I think he have learned a lot in this amount of time that he has served in prison. And I think he's not going to make, he's going to make better choices. And as long as we, as a family is supportive and there for him, I think he'll do good on this road to success. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. Mr. Washington, is there anything you'd like to say before the board votes? I want to uh, thank y'all for giving me a chance to come up for, for a parole because I never had this chance. And um, I promise to do my best as um be a better person when I get out this time. Thank you very much. Ms. Wise, yes, 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 yes. Uh, Mr. Washington, I uh, when I uh, when I read your case last night, I didn't think I would be uh, uh, voting this way. Uh, your sisters have really, really helped. Uh, I'm trying to think of any other. You, you've you've gotten the you've taken the best programs that our department offers with Steve Hall, and, and you uh, you did well there, if I remember correctly. And you took advantage of, uh, of what we have to offer. So I'm inclined to take a chance on you. Um, due to your poor supervision history, I want you to report weekly uh, to PMP for the first three months. Yes, uh, get acclimated to being supervised. Uh, I know your sister supervised you, but you got to get acclimated to being supervised on, on supervision. So my vote is to grant. Uh, and then you uh, AANA meetings at least three times a week, uh, drug screens over the whole period of supervision. And, I, and follow Steve Hall, whatever they told you to do. Uh, and if you need help, ask for it. Yes, uh, a lot of people that's coming at you, or well, they need stuff from you. So if you need counseling or whatever, speak up and ask for it. Yes, uh, I want nobody know if you, don't, you know if you don't tell them. Yes, uh, but that's my vote. I'm taking a chance on you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Wise. Mr. Freeman? Okay, uh, Mr. Washington, I agree with Ms. Wise. Uh, do feel like this is probably about your last opportunity not to be doing serious time. Um, 
So, uh, you know, make the best of it. If you have problems, I'm going to tell you right now, probation officer is not out to get you anymore. They're out to try to keep you out. So call them before you go commit a felony, because once you do that, it's out of their hands. Okay? Yes, so sir. So yourself slipping, get in touch with them, get in touch with your AA people. Uh, hopefully you'll get a sponsor and take care of your family. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Freeman. Uh, Mr. Washington, I agree with my colleagues. Uh, your uh, role has been granted uh, with the following special conditions, that you follow all the recommendations of Steve Hoyle, that you attend uh, at least three AA meetings per week, that you uh, have uh, drug screens, uh, random drug screens for the uh, term of your supervision, and you ask for weekly reporting how for three months for, for uh, 90 days. Good luck to you, sir. Thank y'all so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Are we done at 10 off? Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Thank you, Officer Lick. We'll close out at 1056.
The Committee on Parole is called back to order. The time is 11.01. Our remote location is at Bossier Parish. Uh, Mr. Blanchard, is there anyone from uh, the staff at Bossier Parish in the room with you? Yes, yes sir. Okay, uh, would the staff there please introduce themselves? Sergeant Todd Roberts, security. And Thank Jessica, you, Sergeant. It's Steve Hoyle. <clears throat> Okay, uh, this is our, our case is Mr. Tyler J. Blanchard. Mr. Blanchard, would you give us your full name and DOC number? Tyler J. Blanchard, 586-151. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Blanchard, let me explain our process to you. First, I'm going to read some information into the record. Then we're going to conduct a parole interview with you. At the end, you'll be allowed to make a brief statement before the board votes. Do you understand our procedure? Yes, sir. This is the matter of Tyler J. Blanchard, uh, DOC number 586151, date of birth, July the 28th of 1992. He's a second felony offender. He has a parole eligibility date of March the 23rd of 2024. He is not eligible to earn good time. He has a full term date of May the 18th of 2025. He is currently serving a five year sentence on the charges of possession of a firearm by a convicted felon and second degree battery uh having been uh, revoked on both of those charges is that information fairly accurate mr blanchard yes sir mr blanchard your case has been assigned to miss pearl wise she will begin our interview process would you please answer any questions she might have yes sir good morning how's it going good morning i'm all right how you doing doing good good thanks for asking uh, so you scheduled to graduate September the 29th or 23, right? Yes, ma'am. How's it going? Good. I'm learning. I'm learning a lot. Mm -hmm. Tell me one or two things you've learned. I learned how to the substance abuse and about the negative peer group hanging around, controlling anger. Good. Good. I um. I see you've had two minor rule violations since you've been there, but you've had seven positive behavior uh, reports since you've been there. So you, you, you're getting the hang of it, huh? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, it, it's, um, I do want to inform you that as a part of this process, we reach out to the law enforcement community to get their opinion about early release. All your law enforcement officers, they are opposed to your early release. There's nothing you can do about that. Um, there's some uh, there's some victim opposition that's been expressed in your early release. There's nothing you can do about that. Um, and and can we agree that you have a very poor supervision history? No. Uh, so why didn't you report the last time you got out? I was full of drugs and just lost. Yeah. Yeah. So you uh, just got out of jail and just continued on the same thing, huh? So I'm glad you're able to get some help this time. Yes, ma'am. I'm about to to come to the program because I wanted to better myself. I got tired of repeating the same thing, being on drugs and stuff. Yeah, good. good. And, and take your time in there. Sit on the front row and really take your time because it's, it's not about getting out so much. It is about staying out. And you will be able to stay out. If you, you, know, you really take your time and take in what they're talking about. They are professionals. They know what they're doing. Yes, uh, you also got you got um, moderate knees. There's just some uh, assessment that we do, and 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 the areas that you are high in is mental health, education, and employment. So it shows you got an eight years of education. Is that correct? You got any other education? I I have got my high school diploma through correspondence when I was at David Wade Correctional Center. Oh, good, good. Okay, good. You got a high set. What year was that? I got it in 2018. Okay, good. I'm glad to hear that. Do you yeah, have a train? No, ma'am. Okay. And um, that's something that you can look into getting uh, while you're there. They can send you somewhere where you can get a trade. Oh, that's all I had, Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Uh, Mr. Blanchard, is there anything you'd like to say to the board before the board votes? I thank y'all for giving me this opportunity to come in front of y'all. Thank you. Is the board ready to vote? Yes. Uh, it, it was great meeting you, and I'm glad to I'm glad to see that you're on the path that you are on. Not like last time, but but because you haven't graduated from the program, my vote is to deny. 
I'll reapply as soon as you're eligible for a rehearing. But I will try to get in, you know, transitional work or try to get moved somewhere we can get a trade. You have a case man. You have a high risk and you have victim opposition and poor supervision history. For those reasons, my vote is to deny. But I'm glad that you are where you are. Best wishes to you, sir. Thank you, Ms. Wise. Mr. Uh, Freeman? I concur with Ms. Wise. And my vote is the same. Uh, uh, you'll graduate in September. Uh, you're learning a lot. You're doing well. Uh, as soon as you finish that program, reapply. And if, no doubt, uh, you stay doing what you're doing. You'll be out soon. Good luck to you, sir. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Committee on Pro call back to order. The time is 11 10. Our next case is Mr. Derek Chairs. Mr. Chairs, uh, would you give me your full name and DOC number, please? Derek Chairs, DOC number 292403. Uh, Mr. Chairs, let me explain our process to you. First, I'm going to read some information into the record. Uh, and then we're going to conduct a parole interview with you. At the appropriate time, we'll allow those persons who have input, who wish to have input, to speak. Uh, currently uh, on our list today in opposition is Mr. Randall Meyer with uh, the DA's office in uh, Jefferson Parish. 
Uh, at the end of our hearing, you'll have an opportunity to say whatever you'd like to say to the board, and then we'll vote. You understand our process? That's right. This is a matter of Derek Chairs, the uh, date of birth, uh, July the 1st of 1968, is a fourth felony offender. He has a parole eligibility date of January the 29th of 2022, an adjusted good time date of January 31st of 2025, and a full term date of October the 29th of 2025. He is currently serving a five-year sentence on three separate counts of possession with intent to distribute cocaine after having been adjudicated a habitual offender on one of those counts. Is that basically correct, Mr. Chairs? Yes, sir. Mr. Chairs, uh, your case has been assigned to me, so uh, I will begin our interview. Mr. Chairs, how old are you, sir? 55. And how long have you been in prison on these charges? 40, I, I think, right, I, I think I got 43 months. I, 43 months, I got 17 months left on okay. 60 months. Okay, you got uh, 43, you, you've been in 43 months? Hey, let me see, 15, 12, um, so let me, 14, 15, 16, 18, 19, 20, 20, 20, 20. 30, I think it's 34 months and plus when I completed the program, I got nine months cut off. That's why I'm saying. So All right. I'm, okay. Well, tell me a little bit about your, your, your background. Uh, uh, tell me about your education. How much education do you have? I only have like an eight, eight, like eight grade education. Did you ever try to get your GED? Yes, sir, but I didn't, it didn't complete it. Why not? I could, I just didn't want, during the time when I was serving, I was serving a 20 year sentence in WCI. And I just didn't know, I, did, I didn't pass the, I didn't pass the program. I was in a literature, I was, I've been in a, a literature program for, for a long time. Can, can, can you read and write? Not that good. I, I explained that when I first got it, that my reading and writing wasn't, um, wasn't too good, but I'm, I ain't, no bad, I ain't no bad person. I'm a good person. I, I, I got good understanding and I can read. Right now, by me doing them 20 years, by me reading the Bible so much, and I, I used to read my Bible a lot, and I, that's how I really learned how to read, reading my Bible. Uh, tell me a little bit about, uh, now you were, you, were, uh, you were denied back in July of last year. Yes, uh, you all uh, recommended that you go to Steve Hall. Now, did you complete Steve Hall? Yes, sir. Did nine months completed. Okay. Tell me what you learned in Steve Hall. Tell me what you got out of that program. I got, this time I got, I, I really got a lot this time. I got, like I just told y'all, I did 20 years and I did programs in WCI and the program really Open my eyes, uh, open my eyes, because my, the people, places, and things. I went back to that old stuff, and I didn't take the program serious. But now, I really did. You know, you need that surprise. You need that support system. I didn't have that when I went home after doing twenty years. But this program, it really made me open my eyes, and I surrendered all that, all that bad stuff. Doing them drugs or hanging with them old people or going back to the old places, I surrender that. Let, let me let me ask you this: uh, you you actually have gone through uh, you went through Blue Walker one of the times you were in prison, right? Yes, sir. Two seventeen. What what happened? Why didn't that help? You? I sir, that's why I tell you I relapsed. I, if y'all Y'all have my record. I wrote a letter to the parole board way before I was even granted parole, and I explained to them after serving 20 years, going to Blue Water, I still relapsed after being home, and that hurt me. That hurt that I left my grandkids. I still relapsed. That that addiction, that addiction, it ain't easy. It's hard, but that's why I got to keep my support system in, and, and that's why I asked to go to the support. That's why I asked people. Like if I get parole to go to the uh, program, uh, uh, another 
Keep it real medicine program. Well, let, me, let me stop you and ask you, what's going to be your plan if you're to get out soon? What's your plan to stay sober? Keep, keep it staying focused and, 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 and participate. The first thing I do is the program. I got to I got to stay with the program. That that that's the only way we can make it. Out. We got now, to when, say, when you say program. the program, you talking about AA meetings, a AA meeting, church meetings, uh, uh, any, anything positive, especially with the AA meeting and uh, 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 this medicine, uh, uh, AA, whatever that was, AA. Uh, that's the two number one thing, my uh, sobriety and the AA meeting and church. Let, let me ask you this. What's your train? Where are you going to live if you get out? Well, right now, the um, Keep It Real Minister, right? I'm homeless right now. I never, I'm 55 years old. I've never been homeless. And I asked, and I asked the uh, people at South Child, could they help me if I make parole, go to somewhere where I can. Had this some um, some other state, and that's that's when Keep It Real Minister come in, and I never had I never had that opportunity that before, and I really think that'll help me. So where are you going to be? Tell me again. I'm having trouble hearing you. Can't she could tell him what that place is. He wants to go to the Keep It Real uh, Ministries. They have a housing that's right outside of New Orleans. Um, he sh should be. He's expected to be accepted there. And they also do an outpatient treatment while he's there through CADA. So they have a um, treatment facility and that'll cover his housing. And they help him find a job and um, any kind of support he needs to get back on his feet. Yes. How has he been doing there? He's been doing well. He's a worker. They allow him to be at the academy um, on, well, I guess less supervised because they trust him and um, he's he's doing well. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Uh, Chairs, I, I, I noticed in the report back from uh, Steve Hoyle, uh, you were in the medically assisted treatment program. Are you taking the shot? Yeah. The, Are you taking the control? No, they ain't never getting no shot. You're taking the control. Okay. She said I take it for. Oh, yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. Take it up on release. Yeah, just take it up on release. Okay, and is that something that you're willing to continue to do? Yes, sir. Sure. Have you had any disciplinary write-up since your last uh, hearing? No, sir. All right, any questions? But Mr. Chairs, I saw that you went to Blue Walters in 98. You said you went in 218? 217. 217. Did you go in 98? You know that's, when I first got, that's when I first got my 20 year sentence in 98. Oh, okay. Okay. Let me look again. That's why I, 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 when you said that, I was like, uh oh, I, I wrote it wrong. Okay. So 2017 is when you completed uh, Blue Walters. Yes, ma'am. So, okay. Yeah. Right. Okay, that's all I have. Yeah. Sure. Mr. Chairs, uh, you've done what we asked you to do. Yes, from the last hearing. Do you think you would benefit from some work release now, like six months and then get out to where you'd have a little money put up? Yes, sir. Um, any, any one of my, you know, I want to make sure I'm saying it's right. That, 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 that would benefit me. That would not have benefit me. Or the uh, keep it real, minister. Anyone, I just need. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, now we'll hear from Mr. Meyer. Good morning, Randy Meyer, CCPA, Jefferson Parish. Um, so, Mr. Chairs did what y'all asked him to do with completing the um, Steve Hoyle program. Um, you know, if, if he is granted today, um, you know, I would ask that, uh, you know, he be required to continue with any follow-up care that they have, that they've recommended with that program. Um, 
I'm a little bit concerned of where the Keep It Real Ministries is. I was just online trying to find where they're located. It looks like they might be in Gentilly uh, in New Orleans. And there's just some concern, you know, like, like he said, people, places, and things. You want to be away from those. And uh, I'm a little bit concerned with that. But, um, you know, we're, we're going to take no position on him since he has, has uh, followed the recommendations of the board at prior hearings. Thank you, Mr. Okay. Uh Mr. Uh, Chaz, is there anything you'd like to say before the board votes? Yeah, I'd just like to say thank y'all. I don't know what the outcome going to be, but uh, I'd just like to say thank you. And I'm I'm really kind of like, um, it's crazy to say this, I'm kind of like glad that I came back because I could have been dead. Look, that fit law, the fit law and all that other stuff that's out there, and I was getting high and I, and I missed it. I got grandbabies out there, and that's where I want to be with my grandkids. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just glad I got an opportunity to Get this thing straight again. All right. Thank you. Board ready to vote? Yes. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairs, uh, since your last hearing, uh, you did what we requested you to do. You went to uh, Steve Hall. You completed that program successfully. Uh, it seems that you've learned some things. Uh, I am a little concerned about, about your, your transition plan. Uh, I, I like uh, Mr. Meyer, I'm not that familiar with the Keep It Real Ministries. I do want to make sure that you don't go back to the same neighborhood, the same area that you were in before. Uh, but based upon uh, your completion of Steve Hoyle, based yeah, upon... I, uh, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. Can yeah. I call up an executive session? Sure. Real quick? sure. I, I call up an executive session. I second. Yes. Yes. For a while. Yes. 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 Uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Chairs, we're going to be in executive session for a few moments to discuss confidential matters. Uh, as soon as we do that, we'll return and we'll finish our vote. Yes, sir. Many on parole is called back to order. Uh, Mr. Chairs, uh, uh, just so you'll know uh, what our discussion was about, we have some concerns uh, about keeping the Keeping It Real ministry. We don't know much about it. Uh, we have some, some, some concerns about it, and what little we know, we, we, uh, we're, we're, we're bothered. So uh, my, my vote today is going to be to grant based upon the things that you've done and to follow all of the recommendations of Steve Hoyle, uh, which will include at least three AA meetings per week. Uh, and uh, also that uh, you live, you, you go to a, an approved sober living residence by the department. So uh, they need to make sure wherever you're going is an approved place that will keep you safe and keep you on the right course. So that would be my vote. So uh, I have only one vote, so uh, that's mine. Ms. Wise? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, I'm, I'm glad to see how, how clear you are today. And I hope you stay that way and continue to live that way. Uh, I concur, uh, my vote is a grant as well, and that you also cooperate with the medically assisted 
Uh, that's a whole new thing, but cooperate with that. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, and if you, and uh, they're gonna give you plenty of follow up. You know, you gonna have your counselor take advantage of that. Go see them, talk to them, let them know what you're feeling and what you're experiencing, so you can be there for your grandchildren. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Best wishes to you, sir. Thank and you. our random drug screen by PNP. Okay. Uh, I totally concur with my colleagues. Um, you know, get get an uh, approved residence. If it's approved by PNP, go to that residence and uh, good luck to you. I think you, I think you may have turned the corner, and you need to realize at fifty eight, you better have turned that corner. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Yeah, good luck to you. Sir. Okay. Thank y'all. You're welcome. Thank you. Troy Hobart. Actually, they have Troy Hobart. Do y'all have Troy Hobart there? We do. Okay.
Good morning. The parole committee has called back to order. The time is 11.35. Our next case is Mr. Uh, Troy Hulbert. Mr. Hulbert, would you give us your full name and DOC number? Troy Hulbert, 610001. Mr. Uh, Hulbert, uh, let me explain our process to you. Uh, this is a matter that was sent back to us uh because uh you were given certain things to do and you weren't able to accomplish them so we're going to have a hearing today uh first i'm going to read some information into the record uh and then we're going to have an interview with you and then uh, you'll have an opportunity to say whatever you'd like and we're going to vote you understand our process yes sir this is uh troy holbert doc number 6100001 date of birth june 24th of 1993 uh, parole eligibility date is uh, May 22nd of 2023 and adjusted good time date is November the 28th of 2023 and a full term date is August the 22nd of 2034. He's currently serving a 15 year sentence on the charges of uh, possession with intent to distribute uh, meth and possession with intent to distribute marijuana. Is that information fairly accurate, sir? Yes, sir. The case has been assigned to Ms. Uh, Wise. Would you please answer any questions she might have? How's it going, sir? How you doing? Doing, doing good. Uh, uh, your last hearing, as I already was mentioned, was on April the 4th of 23. Uh, have you had any write-ups since your last hearing? Yes, ma'am. I had gotten a little altercation uh -huh. for the inmate. Okay. What was the outcome of that? Oh, uh, they had put me on lockdown. For 10 days? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, that was uh, July 7th, uh, 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 23. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, other than that, you've been fine? Yes, ma'am. Uh, uh, where, was, where was this fight at? What facility were you at? I was at this facility. Well, oh, you were still at Steve Hall? Yeah. Wait, where are you? Where are you? I'm, not I'm, at, I'm at Bolger. Okay. But you're not in the, in, in the Steve Hart program. You graduated. Okay. Yes, yes ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, I, I, I hate that, about, you know, about that write-up. I sure hate that. It's so unfortunate. And you have been doing so good. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, but you get, you know, but your good time date is in November. You'll be home before Christmas either way. All right. Right? Yeah. Yes, and you'll be, you'll be home before Christmas either way. You know, we have a practice, my policy, that if you had a write-up in, uh, in the last 12 months, you're not eligible for parole. You knew about that, didn't you? Yes, you were, but I wasn't I wasn't aggressive. I was only was defending myself. I wouldn't. Oh, okay. All right. Let me, let me ask the staff about it and see what they say. He did. Yeah, he yeah, did. Were, you, were you found guilty of it? I, um, I played. I, 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 I played guilty. 
You did. That's right. You should have said that's what it says. You pled guilty. Yeah. Yeah. I sh uh, that's unfortunate. That's just so unfortunate. You were doing so good. But don't let it don't let it spoil, you know, what you got going, what you've learned in the treatment program and how you need to practice it. You just need more practice. Uh, in order to get a habit of doing right, you just need more practice. Uh, we're walking away from fights and, you know, when you can, you know, just continue it, to make it one was, It wasn't Wait. my fault. Like, I, I, he, he ran up on me and I had to, you know, defend myself. Like, I never do the first blow. So. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, let me see. Did they... Did they uh, yeah, but they, and the camera didn't pick up that part. Don't sound like it didn't pick up that part when, when they saw it. Y'all both were at it. Anyway, we 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 went there. Well, that's all I had. I just wish you well. That's all I had, Jim. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anything you'd like to say, uh, Mr. Holbert? Um, uh, Thank thanks you. for bringing up. Yes, sir. Yes, so uh, so um, because of that that DB of seven seven twenty three for fighting. Uh, and, and consistent with our, our policy, uh, can, I, can I vote to grant you today? But you'll be getting out before Christmas, as we said. Just keep your head low and, you know, and just continue to do well. Best wishes to you, sir. Uh, Thanks, Mr. Uh, Mr. Freeman. Uh, my vote is the same. I agree. Uh, thank you, Mr. Freeman. My vote, likewise, is the same. It's unfortunate that that happened, but you yeah. did plead guilty to the fighting, and that is our policy. So uh, good luck to you, sir. All uh, right. Take care of that. Well, Thank you. We'll close out at Bossier. Uh, the time is 11.40. But I will give
The Committee on Parole is called back to order. The time is 11.46. Our remote location is Allen Correctional Center. Uh, Mr. Chittenden is uh, with the staff there at uh, Allen. Please introduce themselves. Deputy Warden Brent Thompson. Assistant Warden Crystal Simon. Michelle Harmon, Transition Specialist. Thank you very much. Uh, our first case is going to be Mr. Jeffrey Glenn Chittenden. Mr. Chittenden, uh, would you please give us your full name and DOC number? Uh, Jeffrey Glenn Chittenden, 451-681. Thank you, Mr. Chittenden. Mr. Chittenden, let me explain our process to you. First, I'm going to read some information into the record, and we're going to conduct a parole interview with you. At the appropriate time, uh, we will allow anyone who wishes to speak on your behalf uh, or in your opposition to speak. Uh, currently, we have uh, one person listed, and that's your landlord uh, or potential landlord, Mr. Bobby Odom, who is speaking in support of your parole. Uh, at the end of that, we'll, you'll be allowed to make a brief statement, and then the board will vote. Do you understand our procedure? Yes, sir. Mr. Chit uh, this is Jeffrey G. Chittenden, DOC number 451681, date of birth, April the 1st of 1975. He's a second class offender. He has a parole eligibility date of April the 1st of 2018, an adjusted good time date of October the 7th of 2039, and a full term date of October 1st, 2040. He is serving a 30 year sentence on the charge of simple burglary of an inhabited dwelling after having been adjudicated a habitual offender. Mr. Chittenden, uh, how old are you, sir? 48 years old. And how long have you been in prison on these charges? 13 years. Mr. Chittenden, uh, tell me a little bit about yourself. How much education do you have? Oh, uh, high set. Okay. When did you get your high set? Uh, 2019. And... Uh, Tell me a little bit about uh, your, your work history. What, what kind of work are you currently doing? Uh, do you work, have a job while you're in prison now? Yes, sir. I was in uh, maintenance, and now I'm uh, in uh, building maintenance. What about your uh, trustee status? No, I, don't, I think I have too much time for be trustee. All right. Tell me a little bit about why you're in prison. What happened? Uh, I was on drugs and really uh, didn't really have no no kind of future, you know, no kind of thought of towards the future. You know, I was just a lost young man at that time. But since then, you know, I've had a lot of time to think about 